No girlfriends side, only. Side piece. Yeah. Side piece. My parents are coming. Nice. Like if you want, if you want your, like if your mom wants to come. Yeah. Let me know. Mr. and Mrs. Dog. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't got to bring Mr. Dog. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we recording? Yep, yep. We're starting like that. Oh, shit, man. Nah. <laughs> no, no, I don't have a side piece. Billy, you look like um, Jim Carrey on Me, Myself, and Irene. That's the cut you got right now. I think he looks good. He looks like a cop. <laughs> Everybody needs a cop. I don't have a flat top. It's cop. It's, like, it's a cop. From this angle. I have a flat top, though. You look like an. Are uh, a good clean cut kid from this from the 1960s. Yeah, I get Billy. Look at me real I, quick. You still have those shady wanna, rays, aviators. I want to make sure I'm not going crazy. Why? I'll 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 send it to y'all in a second. Billy looks like he's at a high school dance and they start playing a fast song and he's like, "What what is this music?" The twist. <laughs> They're playing the twist. Yeah. Did I just have you guys not seen me with his haircut yet? Why? Mm -mm. Why are my hips Greased. moving? <laughs> 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 like a greaser like remember the greasers yeah <laughs> roll up your sleeves when is 1950s shit coming back into fashion i feel like that's a decade that we haven't seen come back this year i think is going to be the summer of of like late 80s maybe early 90s like neon shit neon shit's <laughs> happening i was baggy shit baggy shit starting no to come that back. was element that was the lfa no era. neon's coming back i was i was no. a year earlier i predicted it last year because of the barbie thing but Barbie's coming out this summer. Mm -hmm. I was mistaken. What's up, Avery? Look a what Big T just said. In that's the chat. fucked up, uh, buddy. But you do, right? That's, no, no. Look at different angles of him. That is fucked up. That, <laughs> he looks like that's not. But you at do all. know that a he, he has a no, no. Yeah, in this picture, there's no, there's no, 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 not at all. Can we give context? So, no, yeah, let's give context. Like, so he looks like fucking always sunny. Okay, so that's who he looks so like. So today's episode is going to be about the uh, the Idaho murders, and um, it's a it's like a tricky thing to talk about because it's happening right Correct. now yeah um but there's also like a lot of weird stuff that's going on with it that uh, a lot of people have been discussing so we're going to discuss it today and big t just sent a picture of billy to the group chat alongside the person who's the accused murderer that they apprehended uh late last week they don't look dissimilar Gl they he, look he looks alike. like glenn howerton he does not look like me we have a much different facial structure maybe a similar haircut <laughs> there's a little bit of similarity there but no Actually, probably if you had it, you'd probably look okay, more here's like here's Billy lashing out. I'm not <laughs> actually. You're out. the you're you're the one that looks like <laughs> not me. I don't think I look like him at all. It was just an observation. Yeah. D listen, it's a new year. Let's not get off to an acrimonious start. You That's, guys like that, that was word. very that was that was very verbose. You guys like that word? You know, I, big yeah. big T. I'd like you to apologize to Billy. Billy, for, I apologize uh, for for saying you look like the accused. Uh, even though you do look a little bit like No, mm -hmm. you know what? Uh, he apology. went out of the way to say he went out of the way to say accused. That, well, that's what he that is. <laughs> that's a good apology. Yeah. Billy, do you accept no, this apology? Fuck, fuck that. Bring back the Billy Big T beef. I'm full. <laughs> Let's go. Wrap that shit up, Billy. He just called you a murderer. No, 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 no. no it's not. That was a rough. That was a rough time. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough time. That was tensions were high. They, they like kept going after the episode. Yeah. Like the, that was one of the clips from the best of 2023. That was after the episode was done recording. Big T just kept staring at Billy and Billy's like, what the fuck are you staring at? <laughs> I like how we're on to we're on to better things our, in yeah. 2020. Our, our yeah. best of is like just us getting into fights with each other. Yeah. <laughs> Look how good this podcast is. Fuck you, Billy. <laughs> no, fuck you, Big T. I will rape your body. <laughs> Yeah, well, Actually, that right. that yeah. he did oh. say that. He did say that. He did say that. Those were not the terms. He did say that. He did say that. No, no. kill you with that. Sex with the corpse. Yes. Yeah, he That's did say what that. I said. He did yeah, say I, that. I, I assume a dead body cannot consent. Bad, so. bad subject to bring that up. On, that was, but that he was did like say that. Andy Bernard in the office was like, "I'm cutting his head off with a chainsaw." <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to 2023. New year, new us, new macro dosing. Uh, we're back. A lot of people were upset that there was no nano dosing earlier this week. To them, I say, fuck you kindly. <laughs> no, I say thank you for uh, for missing the podcast while it's gone. Um, but the office was closed, and so it was uh, it was not easy to get everybody together. So we said, you know what? Let's just let's push it off, and we will just do a normal show this week. So um, a lot of people talking about um, 
podcast rankings and stuff this week. I've see, I saw a lot of end of the year podcast rankings. Usually a good rule of thumb is if somebody is flexing about how good their podcast is doing and where it's at, uh, they're usually just trying to make up for something. The real ones don't have to flex their muscles. But what I have learned through doing part of my take is occasionally it's just good to drop your nuts on people. Um, so last month, I think, was was that our biggest month ever Yep. across all platforms? Yep. Tier one. Tier one. Doing big stuff. I don't know how many how many podcasts are there in tier one here. I think maybe six, five or six. Top six podcasts. Yeah. Barstool Sports. We're among somewhere in the top six. Yep. We'll let you top figure out. six, not six. We'll let you figure out where that is when I say top six. It's like Darren Ravel being like, I own over nine, nine, nine pieces of MLK <laughs> memorabilia. All time clip. Guess how many that would be. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't <laughs> fix it. Let's start fighting again. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So here's what we have to do. We have to figure out a beef because beef puts asses in seats. I think Mad Dog should get into a fight with Arian. What? <laughs> uh, because, damn. Because then we oh, get we get all the Arian Foster fans out there, and we get the <laughs> Mad Dog simp's going at each other in a big online war. Um. Okay. I think I think that's part of the Venn diagram, though. I don't think we want them to beef him, man. Um, that is my dog. Had, we got nothing. We got nothing. Man. You just said that you wanted her mom to come to the podcast solo. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a, that was a, that was. A, a request. I mean, <laughs> Mrs. Dog do it once, you know. My mom is very excited. My mom is very excited to reunite with Arian. She she did say that, and all. Of I knew it was on me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. What can? What would Arian and I even beef about? I oh, I made a TikTok about him a couple weeks ago, and he hasn't mentioned it. Oh wow! Mm. I'm not. On, I'm not. I'm not on TikTok. Do you not appreciate the work that Mad Dog puts in for you? <laughs> no, that's it was. We I mean, all know that. It, it was on the ma- it was on the macro account, but it was it was like. Brandon Walker talking about, you know, what's a athlete that if they had a second chance on their career would be like way bigger. And I was like, this guy, Arian Foster, like <laughs> he just had a little bit better hands and like maybe not as many injuries. Like who knows what he was up to. Damn. <laughs> and and I, I, was like, I didn't even I didn't even see that under head right. slight though. <laughs> and then and then I was like, I wonder what the, and I was like, wonder what that dude's up to now? And then trying to make a joke. And then someone was like, I think he's doing a shitty barstool podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I can't tell if this is satire or... You, top six. You should have said top six, yeah, top bitch. Six, tier one, bitch. You know what's nice? <laughs> you know what, remember that viral, I think it was a TikTok of a, a girlfriend talking about her boyfriend scrolling through his Twitter oh, mentions, yeah. his Twitter timeline mm-hmm. before a uh, flight so that he has content to read during the flight loaded. And then at one point, I think it stops at a picture of a macro dosing. Yeah. Uh, and what was awesome was what's crazy about the internet is you see more as someone, as a content creator, you tend to see more negativity because of just psychology of humans. Negativity gets directed towards you about content. Most happy people don't say anything. Yes. Uh, but what was great is when people saw in that viral tweet and TikTok, Macrodosing. It was just like, oh, you listen to macrodosing too. And it was just like, like positivity, and that was just great to see. It was very cool. Like I, I got tagged into a ton for the macrodosing count. Saw it when it had like five thousand likes, and I went through and I found everyone that commented like macrodosing, macrodosing, and then it hit like ten million views or something crazy. And I was like, oh my god, there's so many people. Like yeah. you, I, based on the things I say on the show, I forget that actual people listen to this sometimes. Yeah, and. So I was like, oh, my God, in it's the, like in the wild. Yeah. And people who just like in the wild, in the wild. We're, we're, is, is it, I was just going to say, I don't, I don't want to derail, but I was curious about that claim. Is that claim true? Happy people don't say anything. Yeah. I mean, think about it. When people are angry, they're more likely to like, con- like you're like, oh, I'm angry. I'm going to like. So, for example, uh, at the end of the episode, sometimes I've noticed this, like there's each like. Uh, people get angry at the other people. So like, for example, if Big T and Arian get into an argument, I like kind of look at it and you just see the negative comments towards Big T or the negative comments towards Arian, whereas those same people are less likely to comment nice things about Big T or nice things about Arian instead of like being like, Big T, I really liked your point to Arian, Mm -hmm. uh, blah, blah, blah. That person is instead more likely to be like, fuck you arian like your your take was terrible mm-hmm. jesus like you know like something and that's just something you gotta to be like in this industry you gotta be try to get your eq pretty high because it can be tough but like that's the sort of stuff that's like just great to see mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. your EQ. What's EQ? Emotional intelligence. Emotional quotient. I don't even know. No, I think Billy's right about that. Um, there are a lot, there are a lot of unhappy people out there. If you, I've been seeing, um, I, I put up a, a tweet the other day where I was talking about the NFL and and the uh, Demar situation, Demar Hamlin situation, and uh, I get, I'm still getting replies to that tweet, and um, some people are like upset that I pointed out that they were going to restart the game before the coaches stepped in, and and uh, rightfully so, I think, put it on pause. Um, but there's uh, it. it once every like couple hours, I'll read a reply that's very negative about what I said, and then I'll look at that person's profile, and they're just um, just they love to be mm -hmm. upset online, and they're just their timeline is just full of them replying to people that they don't like, telling them to like go fuck themselves. And I think those people, it's it's sometimes important to remember those people are like probably going through something in their own life mm -hmm. that's making them very upset. So, uh, and it took it, it takes you a while uh, to be able to like let those negative comments kind of wash off your back. But once you reach that point, man, it is nice. I know Big T's Big T will just block the shit out of you. Yeah, like who cares? Yeah, that's I, it. I think that's a very EQ. Is that right, Billy? Yeah, you have high EQ being able to do that and not care. Um, when I was saying so, like I've actually noticed when there's more hate, it's usually see there's like seasonal I think implications. So for example, over the holidays was a big hate time because so all the angry people were commenting on their phones. Because they're either unhappy in you know family situations, holiday situations, Spending as too opposed much time to with family. yeah, instead of you know being present. Mm -hmm. So that was something very interesting that I've been looking at. I wish I could like put a chart to it and show the trends. Also, I think January and February are going to be some some high high anxiety months. You think? Yeah, high well, hate. A lot I mean, of seasonal depression. People don't talk about that. Like when during, when they stormed the Capitol, they were probably just sad because of the seasons. Mm -hmm. Just chilly. Summer. So, so this summer. Or no, this, haters. No, no haters. No haters this summer. summer. They would not have stormed the Capitol if it was hot outside. Yeah. Everybody's too busy being on a beach having a novelty drink. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm drinking a, a, a Blue Lagoon down at Margaritaville. I don't really have the time to force the hands of government. So actually this January, it was either dry January or no storming government buildings. Uh, and... We'll find out on Friday whether uh, it's storming government buildings or drinking. So, so, storm a post office. Yeah. Fuck, I'm doing dry January. Does Are that, you? Yeah, does that mean I'm- No, no that's just like me personally. Poor choice. Yeah. I, was, like I had to I'm, quit one vice. Oh, got it. I'm doing yeah. pretty much dry January. I'm like damp? Basically, ja basically dry January. Mm -hmm. Well, I had, I had one drink last night. Okay. And then uh, I've got a wedding I'm going to this weekend. Mm -hmm. So then I've got the rehearsal dinner on Friday. Bro, you go to more weddings than I've ever. That's wild. My friends are horny. I'm convinced people in the <laughs> north get there's there's way more weddings, or people just go to weddings of people they don't know as well. Every weekend, people I know go to weddings. It's outrageous. Bigger weddings? I don't know. I've never been to one up here, uh, but like every weekend, someone I know is going to someone's wedding. Yeah, you don't realize that when you're in college, and when you get out, you you spend the back half of your 20s and most of your 30s spending all of your extra money on buying flights and going to weddings i'm so excited that's that. pretty much what life becomes once baby you hit shower, 25. Baby showers and shit. I, I bought a baby shower for my homeboy <clears throat> not a baby shower a baby um what the fuck are they called a baby car seat? you bought a baby oh car seat uh no billy you always on that epstein shit, man <laughs> no, no. No. <laughs> wait did you get your yeah. did you like show up to your friend's house and you're like did your friend who's a guy have a baby shower no, of course he didn't. It's never for the guy. It's always for the girl and the baby, right? And so was, his lady was, uh, and I forgot, right? So we all sitting there, and of course, this is like uh, the female's responsibility. Like when you go to a baby shower and it's your dudes, like it's rare that you remember to bring a gift for the baby shower, right? So they know that, and so like they had a registry ready already, mm -hmm. and so I just I hit them with the Amazon link. So that's nice. Yeah. Um, are you gonna do dry January or anything like that, Aaron? uh no i mean i dig the alliteration but um i'm straight yeah i'm not doing dry january i'm doing i i'm not gonna have any drinks during the week except for last night that ooh. i'm i'm doing no drink during the week except during our live show um yeah I, heard, I, have to dry drive, I have to be dry for the live show you don't have to I, i'm trying to keep i'm gonna see how long it can go i'm gonna go past january see how long it can yeah go. i'm doing jacked january oh well, yeah. i like that i'm trying january. to get into super bowl abs by cutting out alcohol 
I'm going to do Tanuary. I'm going to get super, super bronze. <laughs> Are you going to do it naturally or unnaturally? No, I'm not actually going to tan up. You uh, be- actually, now I might hold it to it. Hand down, tan down. No, I'm not I'm not going to get tan. Okay, uh, do you want to play odds? If you lose odds, you have to get bronzered. I went to, uh, well, I do have a wedding. I got to look. Got to look at my best this weekend. I have self tanner we can bring in. No, I don't. No, no, I don't yes, think I'm going to do that. Spray or UV? <laughs> I did go bed. hand up. I went to a tanning bed like five years ago, six years ago. I remember we were taping a show here at Barstool with uh, with Liz, and she had these bright ass white lights that made my skin look translucent. And she was like, "You really, you really need some color on your skin right now because you look awful." And so I went to the tanning bed, I laid down, and then my, my skin just started, like it got so dry and crispy. It sucked, I hated it. We should do Zanuary, just a lot of Xanax. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that, yeah. <laughs> no Zans, wasn't that no Zans 2016? We, like our generation just stopped doing Zans in 2016. Oh no. <laughs> bring back Zans. <laughs> no, we're not bringing back Zans, everyone was dying. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't. I don't drink much during the week anyways like very rarely do i do i have anything to drink but i do think that um i'll, I'll make an effort to not have uh, a drink during the week with the exception of when you the rehearsal to. dinner that i've got to go to the live show and um we're done with monday night. Fo- oh yeah there's gonna be monday night playoff games so i'll probably have a beer during those but besides that no drinking during the week during january is friday a weekday friday after five that's a good question. I'm glad that we're on that. We can do Friday after five. Yeah, I should try. all just collectively as a society. I'm, I'm like, you know, have you heard that movement that trying to everybody like three day weekend, like just for good, like from now on. I like it. That should be a thing, man. We spend too much time working. Like people, people need to be happy, man. It'll ease the tensions. You know what I mean? Four days is a lot. Three, just relax, dog. Everybody relax. The robots don't stop working though. That's who we're competing with. Have you guys mm-hmm. seen the McDonald's that are fully automated? I have, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's why that's why the, you know. Uh. I'm just going to say it. I I don't think I'm not going to eat at those. I will not eat at those because not that I'm trying to make a stance one way or the other. I like I like when a human being puts together my sandwich. I think that I think it tastes better. You know what? I'm not gonna be biased against the robot cook, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, try it. I gotta try. <laughs> I mean, because listen to what you're saying right now. You're saying the human being makes it better. Like, yeah, there's no love. I don't, I don't, I don't know. There's definitely no love with the human being making that shit. There's no <laughs> love at McDonald's, dude. <laughs> I mean, but think about that as an asset. You don't have to pay like benefits, labor costs. You just have cool, to pay capitalism. Energy. So laying off a bunch of people. Bunch of people out of jobs. It's so fucking I fun. I love it. No, I'm just saying. Billy's like, saying learn to code so that you can you, you can invent the robot. No, but I mean, it's crazy. Like if you just own something that is just almost a money printing machine. Yeah. Uh, I'm going through a conundrum right now when it comes to. And that's what McDonald's needs. Yeah, more money. <laughs> yep. Well, if you're a franchisee owner, if you're that's a, graduate. a very hard club to get into. If McDonald's you're franchisee. A graduate of McDonald's I don't think University. it is. Isn't it like? Isn't it like? It's only. It's like. Forgive me if I'm wrong. I looked this up once. It's like two million dollars, something like that. It's not like crazy. I may have gotten that wrong. Oh no! You know what? You're totally. I, I could be wrong. I don't you're know. totally I don't right. Know. Dunkin' Donuts is the one that it's impossible to become a franchise 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 owner of. Well, I know Chick Fil A is like crazy. I think yeah. it only costs like ten grand. Huh? But you have to go through all sorts of classes and interviews, and like it's it's impossible. They reject so many people. I, the the uh, McDonald's every, Hamburger every University is the one that it's harder to get into that than it is to get into Harvard. Harvard. There was it, a wait, really yeah, that's for franchisees. So that's like if you're a McDonald's franchise owner and you want to become like the best of the best, they'll send you to to Hamburger University, and then they give you like all the knowledge and all the resources to make sure that you will become like massively wealthy and open up a bunch of different stores. But they take like 1% of 1% of people that apply. There was a football coach that was- Burger I, University. Yep. I think he was the offensive coordinator at the University of Houston and quit coaching because he got picked to be a Chick-fil-A franchise owner. I remember that, yeah, yeah. And I mean- That's just what he print, wanted to do. Prints money. Yep. Arian, do you own any franchises? Nah, man, I have no, and I have no desire to. I know it's a big thing amongst uh, like 
Cause just because it's a great asset. That's why Papa John's is such good friends with Peyton Manning and like Shaq. Cause mm-hmm. they're great. It's a great asset to own. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going through a struggle right now with my, my lunch today from a, a franchise. I ordered from Kava again, mm-hmm. as I do. Mm-hmm. I've eaten at Kava like 90% of my meals in this year. Um, and I accidentally ordered it for 1 p.m. for for pickup, not even delivery. So right now, my meal is just sitting on the shelves in Kava. My lunch is just there. So what should I do about that? Get Spider to go get it. I could, or I could just like tweet out like there's a free meal at, at Kava, Kava if anybody wants it. That's kind of lit. Should I do that? But then I like it. You might have like a storming the, cal- the Kava. Storm, storm the Kava. The Kava. Yeah. Yes. That's a good point. Oh, Shit. we should storm something. No. <laughs> No, Billy has to storm something. <laughs> How about I, this, I Billy? missed out last time. <laughs> Let's storm the New York Public Library and read. No, because they'll... <laughs> Dude, I, I, honestly, I'm more scared of a librarian than anybody guarding a government building. <laughs> like a shh. Getting shush? Shh, what yeah. Are you doing? I, if, they had, if they had a few librarians that were mixed in with the Capitol Police on January 6th, <laughs> and they were just like, shh. People are trying to work in here. They're passing a vote. I bet you people would have just been like, oh, sorry, I, my I, mistake. I have a weird fear of librarians. But I'm actually, I respect anyone who's trying to up their knowledge Why independently. Do you, let's explore that. Why do you fear librarians? Because I've been shushed many a time by librarians. Yeah. I, I, I can, believe that. I can see it. That checks out. Yeah. <laughs> Playing games on the computers. Yeah. Billy. What was your favorite uh, mini clip game? Oh, uh, this one is rare. I don't know if anyone can find anymore, but On the Run was my favorite I don't remember that one. FFX runner. I've actually tried to download it to play it, but I actually think the government got rid of the Flash player on browser games because uh, they didn't want to increase worker productivity, but that's a conspiracy for another time. I'm on it, I think. Because we use, you can't play games on browsers anymore. I'm on an ad. Hang on, I'll tell you in a second. I think it literally like every they deleted the flash player. Yeah. Like it's kind of BS. There's no more flash games. There's there's app games. I don't know, big big Apple big app store killed the flash player. Um we just got an email. I want to talk about this on the air cuz I think that uh the listeners will appreciate what goes on behind the scenes here. We're already being asked to submit designs for St. Patrick's Day merchandise. Ah. Here at Macrodosing. Let's design one. I think we got to put out like an Irish rule the world, like, you know, the Irish conspiracy that we came up with that Irish control the media. They control all the money, all oh, the banks. The, I don't think like a giant, ha- yeah. a giant leprechaun sitting on top of the of the globe. Of a, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and like gold coins and rainbows shooting out of his pockets. Fuck yeah. yeah. Call I still get tons just make of a big hate. T, make a big T, big redhead cat. That's yeah. not it. Yeah, or, or or how about no, Billy? I don't can, have red hair. We can do one that's just uh, the why is it now? The potato famine wasn't real, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I've been getting tons still. So it went some Reddit group of Irish people got lo- loaded that clip and just no context, don't know what Barstool is, don't know what we do, and was just coming after me and just like still to this day. And I had to explain to them like. Hey, not who's bad. I'm not anti-Irish. Speaking of other nationalities, I watched my cousin Vinny. Oh, this is I big. Um, I would have been entertained by that movie in 1992. Okay. It was a little old for my taste, but if in 92, I, I would have enjoyed that movie. It's, I didn't hate it. It's funny, right? Yeah, it was good. I I, I liked the ending. You had a mix of of the Southern culture, the New York Guidos. Yeah, I liked the the like grits came into play in the courtroom and yeah, it was, uh, grits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it was, was hard. Yeah, it was it was it was a good movie. Yeah, but it also didn't have like the mob shit. Like that's what I was talking about that I don't like. Oh, yeah, you know, like the mob stuff. Yeah, yeah. so organized like that, crime. So that wasn't really the two Utes. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's good. Just good, classic. Good movie. Uh, all right, so I'm What's glad your... that that's I that's what I was saying, Big T. It's like not um. It's not a mob movie, but it's right. a good introduction to realizing Italians. that Joe, <laughs> Joe Pesci can be a good actor. It was so a now, good movie. We yeah. got to figure out what the what the second one would be. Big T, what's your middle initial? Why? 
Just wondering. Wait, was that as your answer? As as no, no, that was W H Y. Okay. W. Oh, I, I, he was asking <laughs> if I was replying with wow. the letter okay, okay. Y yeah. or wow. asking hey, why you really wanted to know. Out, said, w H Y. <laughs> I was like, wait, what is it? Why do you want to know? Because you know, like organized crime, and there's a JFK, and there's an RFK, and now there is a C. It's not F. What was it? It doesn't matter. Okay, well then there's a C something K who also doesn't like going to ice cream. So just like watch out. It seems like a W. I guess I it is in my it's in my uh it's in my Twitter at oh, H. H, yeah. Connor H. Yeah, so JFK, RFK, and CHK. Got it. Not Wait. fans of organized crime. CHK doesn't give does not have the same pizzazz as the other one. Is as a FK? kid, as a kid, I wanted uh to be called Chuck for a period of time because my initials <laughs> kind of look like Chuck. <laughs> I could call you Chuck. No, it's I'll too late. You Chuck, it's it's too late. Kind of like that, Chuck. Uh, your initials are, I think it's Chesapeake Energy Stock. Really? Chesapeake is that the, Energy. Yeah. Is that the Thunder Arena sponsor still? I don't know if it still is or not. I know that um, that was this, this, Aubrey this. McClendon's company, and he drove his SUV into the side of a bridge when he was about to be under federal indictment. No kidding. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's do it. Let's do everybody's everybody's initial stocks and put it on the, uh, the little grab. That's just hilarious. What if we start like a fund that's just the stocks <laughs> of our <laughs> initials and it just skyrockets? Okay. Uh, I don't think mine is kind of fire. Mine, mine's, mine's is on the up and up right now. What's yours? A Apollo Tactical Income Fund. That sounds. Hey, I am. That sounds dangerous. That sounds like military and sounds like a complex. Sound, sounds like it's winning. Us. <laughs> mine's expensive. <laughs> what What's is yours? It? Mine. So mine's MMC and it's Marsh and McLennan companies. And it's a global professional services firm an insurance brokerage, risk management, reinsurance services. I don't know what that means. We're going to be rich. But it's $169 a share. Nice. And it's up, wow. up 3%. Mine today. doesn't exist. Yeah, mine's a dollar thirty-one a share. I'm not giving you guys that much here. This uh, this Martian McLennan is about as volatile as you can get if you go look at the the year to date or not year to date, the one year. I'm looking at the Nasdaq. Mine's at twelve right now. Oh yeah, bounces up and down. The McLennan one does. Is it I, in a dip right now? It's no, a, it's on an upswing. Okay. Actually, I guess it's not moving that much. These numbers, the the y-axis is skewed you gotta zoom out it starts at 140 so it's fine it's fine i might go invest in it i don't know how to invest i might go invest in it i've lost an embarrassingly large amount in the stock market from... wasn't that like your major no oh. <laughs> wait what's an embarrassing large amount it's just i thought i put it into very conservative places but since i put it in the market was way overvalued and now it is I guess under I would love to hear I would love to hear what you thought was a conservative place. Go ahead. Shoot. Uh let me look up the exacts. But a lot Frog of it, a lot of it was shit. Vanguard accounts. Mm. Just what like just like uh large ETFs and whatnot that are just multiple like the whole stock market combined. And I just don't know what to do. I don't know. Anyway, playing the field. Playing the field. Just but playing the field usually is lucrative, but you got to take the ups and downs with it, right? Yeah. So it's like usually, I think like shit since the, don't quote me on this, but I think since like the depression, uh, the market has yielded, I think like from five to 8%, like if you just ride it out. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're never down until you sell. That's what all the really bad people at stock trading will tell you. Yeah. Don't you just wait till it comes back up? <laughs> yeah. You just got to wait. You just got to hold, you got to huddle or hold. Yeah. So everyone's being like the the sound advice is to put more money in now that it's undervalued from when i started but the thing is what if that money just goes right away like when it started so you know i think there's something you just learn with time anyway that was stock. You're, <laughs> you're not gonna you're not gonna learn that no yeah. like nobody's like you're listening to people explain the stock market that are in the stock market they're like we don't really understand that shit like that they just place a whole bunch of odds and it's just gambling I don't understand that shit. So they're just gambling me. and can write know. off the losses on their taxes. That's the difference. What? And none of that shit. Dog, did you see that report that came out? They did um uh, a breakdown of 
all of the senators, every every senator, every every member of Congress that uh, beat the market <laughs> in, in last year's fiscal year. It shit was insane. How many people beat the market? Like they're just the greatest traders of all time on top of running the country, bro. She does hilarious. I mean, they have like you know, all their salaries are I think under two hundred k. Yeah, but they're just they're really getting paid in secrets and insider trading. That's just sh- supposed to like, be illegal. Like Nancy Pelosi's net worth is like what, yeah. like one twenty or, or two, almost two hundred well, or something. No, like no, that? her husband's the one who really gets it done with. The yeah, Nan- Nancy's on the up and up. She's she's clean. Her husband is just like very very lucky in terms and, of every trade that he's ever made in his entire life. And because you can't testify against your spouse. I'm pretty sure that's is true. that true. I think there's something that, like that. That seems like something that I've seen in movies that that yeah. if you really explore, probably would not be true. I think it's true. It sounds cool. Yeah, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like it's like what would you what if you're you, in any crime? No, no. I think like in certain investigations, it's under like, the federal rules of evidence in a criminal case, the prosecution cannot compel the defendant's spouse to testify against them. Because so, pillow so, talk. So wait, that's federal. I don't know if that only applies to federal crimes. It says the federal rules of evidence. Okay, but and I so think that, that would be a fe- yeah. It sounds like a federal. And I think federal law insider trading is a federal offense. It might be. It's SEC investigated federal offense. I know that you can you can testify against them, but the government cannot make you. Yeah, testify that's that's what I mean. So, so, so it's like the fifth, like pleading the fifth. Like so, it's like if if they're probably guilty and you, and you have corroborating evidence, mm-hmm. they' about to get you. You can be like, I don't know shit. It's though. like Nancy, did you tell your husband to invest in uh, that? Was it Invia? Mm-hmm. That chip company. Mm-hmm. Did you tell him to invest in Invia before you visited Taiwan to make sure China didn't invade and we put all those factories there? No, I didn't. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, I won't tell you because I won't testify against my husband. Boom. Yeah, their impression uh, are spot on. They're they're a lot of crooks, a lot of crooks out there. And now that Nancy's no longer speaker, who's going to be speaker? Do we know? It's not Kevin McCarthy. It had, no, it's it's it uh, a vote on it. It's you? some WEF leadership committee member. I think McCarthy. Wait, the World Economic Forum is yeah. going to be Speaker of the House? Well, one of their leadership programs because McCarthy. You know, it's an individual that is. Yeah. The Speaker of the uh, House. But guess 16 what? minutes ago, McCarthy lost the fourth ballot. Okay. So That's like he's lost all four, right? Yeah. So as he got swept, how does that work? What's going on? <laughs> I didn't even know this was a thing. It hasn't happened in over 100 years. I thought the party just picked somebody, which I guess is what they're doing. But I thought like the RNC just appointed someone and that's who it was. Um, but I, I didn't this, even know this was a thing. This guy keeps losing because they know he's a Klaus Schwab puppet. Most of the like RNC. So they're trying to make sure he doesn't get it. Who, if McCarthy? You, yeah. He look. I'll show you. There's a list of leaders on the WEF website okay. that are their like candidates that they run and they pay money to, and it's a whole thing. And Klaus Schwab is a puppet. So the wait. So the W a puppet master. The WEF got Kevin McCarthy elected to the House of Representatives. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're all plants, and they have them all over the world, especially in Canada. You can literally. Yep. It is all there. And what is WEF? The well, World yeah, Economic this. Forum, who conduct great economic, uh, like, uh, tests by like giving, you know, a a uh, village in Kenya a bunch of money and not giving the other village in Kent, like right next to them, mm. a bunch of money and seeing how they interact with each other and literally just promoting scarcity and doing all these, uh, you know, sort of economic te- like experiments in the third world and it's just not like to just to see how people react and just fuck with random people because they have tons of money and tons of control and no one can check them i uh, yeah so that that does not surprise me at all that there would be these giant economic confederations that are uh like performing experiments essentially uh so that they can be like here's how we should invest our money in the future but the reality is they're using people um, as like pawns in their in their little game. But where are you saying that Kevin McCarthy is a pawn of the WEF? He oh, he's in, got the receipts. I know. I'm just looking. He's on their website. He's a WEF. I think leadership 
uh, member. Okay, it just says Kevin McCarthy. I'm looking at his page right now. There's just a page that's, that's a picture of Kevin McCarthy. It doesn't say what he does for them. Okay, well, let me find the exact list. Okay. But, so who are they going to elect? Who, who's it going to be? Or does he's a to... member of the WEF. That's why he's on the website. Okay, does it have to be somebody that's in Congress? I read, I found out it actually does not. Okay, so they could, what if they elected Trump? Someone voted for Lee Zeldin, the guy who was a representative and then ran for governor in New York. Ah, what if it was Trump though? They could just make Trump Speaker of the House. Theoretically, yes, they could. Oh, that, that would that would be awesome. Oh, you think it would be awesome? It'd be it'd be would funny. Be great for the country. It'd be funny. <laughs> it'd be so funny. isn't the, the the party's like finally split on Trump, isn't it? Like now they're like p- part of them are like no fuck no he's not winning anymore, and the other part is like loyal to him. That's kind of what it sounds like, like. Yeah. Like Matt Gates, he's uh he's like calling out people that are that are seemingly too far to the left for him. And um, it's, everyone's just calling each other a rhino at this point. <laughs> the the hardcore Trump people are the ones that are not voting for McCarthy, right? Because I think so. that's 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 uh, MGT and because I see MGT cons, and Bober yeah. was beefing. Why why are they beefing? I haven't seen that. Probably yeah. somebody called somebody a rhino. That seems like that's where this all ends up eventually. Is the problem with being extreme on the left or on the right is uh, it's very easy for somebody to kind of usurp you and to take away all your power just by going even more extreme than you are and then pointing out that you're too much of a centrist. It's like the oldest playbook in the world. So, um, yeah, next, like, there will be a gun that runs for Congress and the gun will be like, Lauren Boebert is, she's a lib. And then what's Lauren going to say? Like, well, if you if you love guns so much, then why don't you just like amputate your arm and and put a, a shotgun a Mossberg from your elbow down? It's like a you Brian. What is what is the who's the person with a gun as an arm in video games? It's not Duke Mega Man. Nukem. I think Duke Mega Nukem Man. too. I think did Duke Nukem chop his arm off and put a gun? I think so. Yeah, Duke Nukem is going to run for Congress and be like Duke- Lauren Boebert's gun restaurant discriminates against people who literally have a firearm. Duke Nukem was way before my time, but when I discovered Duke Nukem, I think they came out with a new Duke Nukem game, like throwback. Crazy. Uh, the fun, like most ridiculous person, like yeah. character of all time. It appears uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is point. in favor of Kevin McCarthy. Oh, okay. I think. That and then her, she tweeted, we are on day two in the same never Kevin group is now on their third speaker candidate. People are truly beginning to realize they have no plan and they are sick and tired of trust the plan. That's a complete secret and never produces results. I don't know she's which side. On I, shots at Q? I don't know what side she's for. No, it's it, it seems to be she is in favor of voting for Kevin McCarthy. Okay, so where do we stand now? Who else is there? Uh, I think people were voting for Jim Jordan. Oh, Jordan's going to be speaker? I think that... No, 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 no. I think that's the people who weren't voting for Kevin McCarthy were voting for. Okay. Can't they just, like, continue and and not have a speaker? Do you really need a speaker? I think you do have to have one eventually, yeah. All right, here's Lauren Bobert. You can't vote on anything until there's a speaker. Here's Lauren. Uh... I have no doubt there are plenty of my colleagues who would prefer to go along to get along. I was elected to secure the border, get spending under control, and fix our energy crisis. It's about making sure we have a leader that aggressively will push that agenda forward. It seems like the swamp doesn't like being disrupted. So she's, from what I can gather, she's trying to drain the swamp, and then other people are trying to fill the swamp in. And then... Um, I saw there was also a clip of Matt Gates and AOC having a little conversation yesterday. You see that one? You think they're... I saw a, a brief part you, of it, yeah. You think they're hooking up? No, that, that didn't that, scream... <laughs> that didn't scream lover's quarrel to me. That actually screamed like they have a working relationship, which I didn't think that they did. I can't stop peeing. I got this new cup. All I do is drink water all day long. What's that called? The Stanley Cup. Okay, I, that's this all Kelly I hear about. I got one as a surprise for Christmas. I've been drinking so much water, it's insane. 
Don't Every, get a hydropoxy. Th there's so many. There's so many cups. I know. It I was got, the hydro flask. I, I got two cups. I got this and a Lululemon cup. For Christmas. Oh, they make cups now. Mm -hmm. My brother it's, got it. It's me. always a cup. It was insulated. It's awesome. <laughs> what does that mean? The, the women, women have women so many cups. cups. <laughs> Is that true? Are I we, love a cup. We're not recording right now, what? Right? Yes. No, we're good recording. We're good. Yeah, we should. Oh, okay. Like, I love a cup. Women love cups. You, this is breaking news to me. I mean, there's a new cup every few months. <laughs> yeah. This <laughs> is the new cup. She has the okay. new cup. Mm -hmm. All right. I did I see that on TikTok. One girl was like, I asked for the Stanley Cup for Christmas, and she got like a replica Stanley Cup. Like yeah. It's a trophy. <laughs> yeah. The Hydro Flask used to be the big one. I right? thought that was the cup we were on, but then I found out recently that this is the new one. There's if you get cup. the old cup, you're done. Yeah. 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 If no. you if you get if you buy someone who is one of these water drinkers, the old cup, they're just like, nah, dude. This cup started the Mormons, actually. I gave in. The Mormons got this because they put their pop in it. And then everyone was like, huh, that's what? a great Look at this, and then it fits. This is supposed to be so it fits in the cup holder in your car. So I I, I appreciate that because if there's anybody that knows like how to drink soda, it's, it's going to be the Mormons. Mormons. It's I, like I want to get my cups from Mormons for soda <laughs> and my beer glasses from Irish people. Mm -hmm. I want so badly to go to one of those soda just shops they have in Utah. Have you seen these? Yeah. yeah. It's like have you, you've been to Sonic? Yeah. It's like Sonic on steroids, but they don't have food. They just have Soda. sodas with all sorts of crazy mixtures and shit you can Syrup. get in it. It's awesome. You that can, does sound good. You can get like a it's Dr. Floats? Pepper with vanilla syrup and coconut creamer. Is And it's like 800 grams of sugar. Do they do like f soda floats? I think so. Is mm -hmm. it like one of those old fashions? Crazy what happens when people can't booze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do That's want, uh, park, I'm going to Park City, Utah in the uh, end of the end of the month. I'm gonna have to check that shit out. Hell yeah. Please and do. I've also heard that they uh if you do go to a bar, they have to pour their mixed drinks behind like little modesty barriers. So you to can't tempt them. You can't see people pouring mixed drinks. Does that make sense? So like when they put the cup down on, on the bar, there's like a little thing that the bartenders go behind and so you can't see their hands as they're pouring the liquor into there. Why? I don't know. It's the same like reason and principle that back in Victorian England, they had to cover up the legs on like piano benches that you'd be sitting on because it was too scandalous to be able to see a, like, you know, a naked wooden uh, like table leg. Wait, actually? Yeah. I was about to make that joke in my head. Like they don't, they didn't let any type of legs get <laughs> uncovered. No, seriously. In, in Victorian what? England. Yeah. Or Puritan England. Maybe okay. that's what I'm thinking of. Table legs, women's legs, none of that shit. That's actually the horniest thing that I've ever heard in my Third life. Legs. That they <laughs> that they ha they have to cover up a fucking wooden table leg because they'll be like, oh, oh fuck. Their testosterone levels were so much higher than ours nowadays. You think they you think they were better at sports? <laughs> have you seen them clog dance? I have not. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, no, I've actually been going down rabbit holes of really old photos that just like really shatter your perspective of like it's just such a juxtaposition to today. Mm -hmm. And there was like, uh, there was a picture of a bikini contest at like Daytona City Beach. And then there was a picture of an ankle contest where it was mm -hmm. literally just like a stage. Everything was covered except for these women's ankles. And it was like a Victorian England, like ankle contest. An ankle contest? Whoever had the best ankles. That's pretty sick. Shit, that shit weird, bro. <laughs> it was that like. Shit is weird. Uh, it's just, and there's other stuff I can't remember right now, but it's just like crazy different. Old I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, it's like people back then wasn't any less horny, bro. You know what I'm saying? They just had to hide the shit. So like. Not, like that's why I, I'm appreciative of today's time. I know it's wild and like there's all kinds of shit that you never heard of or agree with what's going on. But it's like I'd rather people get it the fuck out rather than suppressing it. You know yeah. what I mean? It's well, not, I feel like it's good. We spoke about this before. No one's really getting it out because no one really has desire anymore. <laughs> Your Maybe that was a desire all along, though. <laughs> Your generation is like the least, like the probably the the last horny generation. My generation is. Yeah. I saw a tweet where it was like, yeah, men may not be having sex anymore, but at least the four seam fastballs up. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We're, we're, we're learning to control our testosterone productions and channeling it into, into positive, positive uh, channels instead of just having sex, which is the gayest thing that you can do. I mean, yep. it, does, yep. woman. You, it does steal <laughs> all your power. It does. Wait, yeah. do, wait what? 
women make Wait, what do you mean? legs weak. What do you mean? What do you mean? It. What's it? What's it? Pussy. <laughs> What's it? Uh. Psh. What is it? <laughs> is that the What's sound the that it? it makes? No, you just hit a librarian voice. <laughs> <laughs> Man, just hit a three pointer from forty feet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, no, it's I'm I'm mimicking a uh, semen retention <laughs> bodybuilder bros. Okay, gotcha. it's it's a very funny part of the internet. Oh yeah, that much was found on bodybuilding forum, which I read way too extensively. Yeah, there there was that dude. I signed up for his newsletter. Um, uh, Tariq quit porn specialist. Yes, I had to unsubscribe because he sent way too many emails. <laughs> he just the started dude, sending way too much porn. All he thinks <laughs> about is porn. Like this guy that's a quit porn specialist was sending me like three emails a day about like how hard it was for him to quit porn and what types of porn he would watch. <laughs> you just and it's thought. like, dude, this is, this is weird. Specifically, this video made me relapse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just sending a ton of porn to people. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what Tariq's up to, but he is he's definitely top top five percent. Uh, top Louisiana two. just put in a law in place that you need to show your government ID to access porn online. Hmm. I don't hate that. I yeah. So wow. whack? Whoa, whoa, why is that? What? Because wow, Aaron and, and Mad Dog really going at it. You guys yeah, hate each other. Yeah, yeah, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> Mad Dog. Mad Dog, why don't you think minors should have easy access to porn? I oh, you said minors? Yeah, you have to. Well, you have to show 18. your ID to prove that you're eighteen. Nah, I still don't like it. Uh, okay, Mad Dog, why do you think they should have access I'm, to boys? Okay, so I'm going to I'm gonna confirm I'm not a boy, so I wasn't like, I don't know, doing what you guys were doing at 12 and like watching like bigboob.com. But, <laughs> That's what I was on. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like I, people talk about now how like porn has ruined like intimacy and like ruined men's brains of how women should be, I think, or even 16. I don't know. I feel like you got to have a little bit more of your frontal lobe developed before you're seeing like big tits. <laughs> As the JOI connoisseur, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to add that I think everybody should be able to do whatever they want. No, I just think I'm, I'm very libertarian with this. Yeah, I just think um, that certain because, men should chill on the porn. Well, I think I think you're going to have extremely horny cats no matter what, no matter if you censor the shit. Or or not, right? There are always going to be these dudes who just are just out here trying to fuck every hole they see, right? But for me, I think it's more like it's because we shun porn, one, and we shun sexuality. So it's like you don't even allow people to explore their sexuality so much so that when they finally start to understand what their desires are and their likes are, they can't even really talk about it to anybody because it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's frowned upon. So rather than having... Like that dialogue and what's the healthy way to have sex with somebody? What is the, what's the what's the risk factors? You know what, what kind of you know what kind of things is consensual versus you know pushing the line? What like whatever the case may be, like you can't have those conversations because it's so taboo. I'm for like just exploring that shit, but educating people on it as well. Like you know, I'm having horny thoughts, mom. Like what should I do? Like hey, here's a pamphlet. You know what I'm whatever. <laughs> <laughs> have a class for this shit. You know whatever. Talk about this shit because if we talk like if you look at like we evolutionarily titties was they just were a part of whatever the titties were nothing but because you cover them up all these years then they become this mysterious skin seeping it's, from the top of the body it's, it's actually titties. wild how tits evolved go on didn't you talk about vintage boobs <laughs> okay we're getting there we're going back to caveman times no it was like a, a weird fetish that suddenly just became widespread because it was like the children ended up getting like more nourishment yeah we, my best guess is that as a man with four nipples as a man with four nipples let me just say is my best guess is that um a larger breast would be um more like an easier target for a baby they would see it and be more likely to latch on than if it was a flat like completely flat chest i actually think it has more of like a camel's hump type you can store more milk yeah you can know you can store more fat which in starvation situations is more able to feed a child okay didn't they do big on in the ice age didn't they do research in some african tribes that they have like bigger boobs and penises because like they don't wear underwear or bras and like the gravity like makes them bigger i don't i don't know I saw something about that. Why are you laughing at me, Billy? I, I don't know why I'm hung, Avery, but I think my, 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 my best guess is that 
It's just the forbidden fruit factor. Like once you start hiding titties, it's like what's under the shirt? Prize is titties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like like when you like nudist nudist tribes or nudist colonies, like they grow up and kids grow up. It's just not a big deal to them because they see it all the time. And it's not a big deal. We just make it a big deal. So all this like kids don't need to see titties. It's like. But men titties are okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, yeah. it makes no sense. Madeline, can you make, when he said, surprise, it's titties, can you make that a sound <laughs> on TikTok? Because I think that could go really viral. Yeah. <laughs> surprise, it's titties. <laughs> Titty drop off I have, I have uh, the international bra sizes, uh, average breast size worldwide. Can you guess what the number one country is with the biggest boobs? Mm, Uganda. No, no, I'd still. actually go with Russia. Mm, nope. Biggest boobs. Let me think. We're talking un. We're talking surgically natural, like no surgery. Yeah, natural. It, you know what? Okay, Jugs Oktoberfest, Germany. It might be the United States, but I'm not going to say the United <laughs> States, even though I want to. I feel like this is a USA thing, so I'm going to say it's not. But they're close. Okay, I'm going to go with Canada, Colombia. No, they're below okay, the a, United States. I'm, they're top ten, though. Okay, yeah. I like where you're going. I'm gonna keep it there. I'm gonna go Brazil. I said Brazil. Nope, they're not even no, in the Brazil's top ten. Miss Brazil's. BBLs for, but, for butts, bro. But that's what I'm saying. But like you know, proportionally, I figured you know. Brazil's know average is an A and a B cup. Yeah, we're Croatia. talking C D. Croatia. Nope. Is it is it England? South America, Caribbean area. Uh, it starts with an N. In. Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Nope. Nigeria. Netherlands. Netherlands. Nope. Northeast Ohio. North Korea. No. <laughs> Norway. <laughs> yes. Norway. 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 Wow. Norway. Norway. They're large people. Norway, they average a C to D cup. Wow. Average. Average. Yep. Whoa. That's pretty impressive. That's so painful. Top five is Norway, Luxembourg, Mm, Iceland, United States, United Kingdom. I feel bad for them. All right. Top five. Yeah, we're there. Five cakes. Well, yeah. 12, (laughs) I mean, 12 year olds just don't have the frontal lobe to handle bigboobs.com. The lowest? That's the the conclusion we just made. The lowest, the bottom five is Vietnam, Bangladesh, Cambodia, Nepal, and the Congo. That makes sense. They should actually have a, a separate section for them at the UN and make them sit at the itty bitty titty committee. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be funny for a day, like as a joke. The small titty table. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel bad for those women. Good times. I'm a fan good of times. small titties though. Titties are great across the board, you name it. A fun fact about titties is that um, when we're in the womb, when we're developing as people, uh, our nipples form before our our sex is determined. So that's why men have nipples because we get nipples before we get separated to being a, a man or a woman. Is that interesting? Hmm. That makes sense. That is interesting. I wonder why they just decide, you know, when the baby making machine just t- titties, nipples first. So you got four? So you you got to make sure the nipples are on. <laughs> so you got four nipples? Yeah. Before those, they developed at the same time? I think so. I don't know. That's pretty I, wild. I don't remember. Where, where You're you probably related twins? to like Rome, Romulus and Remus. I'm related to Rome? Yeah. You know how Romulus and Remus were, uh, they they drank the milk of a wolf? No. And they had this oh, yeah, picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they breastfed. They yeah. breastfed the, the wolf. There's a statue of that wolf in Cincinnati. Yeah. 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 Do we see it? I don't think we saw it, but that's just a fun Cincinnati fact that I remember. Cincinnati is. Cincinnati has a lot of quirks like that. It does. There's some real, real weird stuff about that city. Mm-hmm. Cursed field. I'm just saying it. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, we don't really have to get in. I don't know. And Arian, unless you have anything that you'd like to discuss when it comes to Demar Hamlin and what we saw, um, I've talked about it a little bit, yes. but I don't. I don't just, really have anything just else how that the, the, the NFL continues to prove that they do not give a fuck about the health of players. They don't give a shit, and so I hope his family's doing well, man. I like you know all the positive energy and shit that everybody's sending out. Just you know, they all recognize that yo shit is bigger than the sport, man. Like somebody almost died, man, and he's still in critical condition. It's just sad, dog. <clears throat> I actually had a scare like that. Um, uh, cause I have, I actually have atrial fibrillation mm-hmm. and, uh, I, I, uh, I exited, um, I think it was 2012 I was playing the Vikings and I exited at half, to, like right before half in the second quarter. Cause I went into AFib and it was my first time going into AFib on a, on a football field. So I was like super scared. 
And so, uh, you know, I, nowhere near that situation, obviously, but uh, it's just, man, man, fucking NFL. And they don't give people lifetime health insurance, so fuck mm-hmm. them. G- do you mind explaining a little about that condition? Is that also the same condition JJ Watt had? I have no idea what's going on in JJ Watt's heart. I think heart. he had um, he, he had AFib. Like, what exactly is the uh, symptoms? Just someone who's curious. AFib, AFib, AFib uh, it's like um, it, your heart is, or like it's electrical, and so basically what I was explaining to me it was like AFib is a it's like an electrical misfire, and so every now and then your heart will like it, everybody's heart like pumps like regularly sometimes people that have afib it'll go into um like a, a irregular heartbeat so instead of like thump, 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 it'll be like thump, 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 thump. and then so when you go into afib it's it continues to be irregular for a long period of time or for any any period of time and so um it's really scary when you don't know what it is cuz it like it it can send you into like an anxiety attack and that can like over you know, and then your brain starts going like, "Oh, I'm having a heart attack," and it's like, you know, so it could just, you know, accumulate yeah. and and it just it just gets really bad. So like, it's better to be aware of it. Um, and there are diff- several different risk factors to yeah. consider if you if you have it to look into it. And I'm not a doctor, but you know, if you know somebody or have somebody with it, like get that shit checked out. It's all I've I've always been under the guy like it's better to be safe than sorry. I'd rather call the ambulance forty times for like a, uh, you know, for nothing. You know, for a panic attack, over that could have been the last one. You know what I mean? So I don't know. It's tough. I gotta say though, ambulance bills are insane. Yeah. Oh, fun fact: I had a panic attack in Japan, a super panic attack. I thought I thought this was the one, and uh, this was this was when I started having panic attacks, and I didn't know what it was. I'm talking about they hooked me up. I, they ran mad tests. It was crazy. They did all. They gave me all kind of medicine. They didn't know what it was. Finally, they figured out it was GERD. That was causing my panic attacks, and uh, uh, I, like in hospital visit ambulance, we rode like an hour in the ambulance because I was in like some small town. Uh, all that shit was like one hundred fifty dollars, crazy. Huh? Yeah, dude. I so actually someone who I knew ended up passing out uh, running a half marathon. Uh, they had to get an ambulance. It was a crazy bill, mm-hmm. but yeah. Um, Wait, what's a lot of people don't call ambulance because of that shit. Gerd is like, Gerd is like, it's an end like a digestive problem. So it's like gas and shit builds up in your stomach and it puts pressure like right on your uh, stomach, which is right by your heart and it's right by your lungs. And so like puts pressure there and makes your chest feel tight and it makes it feel like you're having a panic attack, heart attack, whatever. And it's just, it's just really uneasy feeling in your chest that a lot of people mistake for like heart attacks all the time. Oh man! And then your brain starts going to into panic mode, essentially, and that makes the symptoms worse. So it's like a cycle. And then, and then it's like you can't breathe. And she's just talking about it makes me breathe heavy because it's like my brain's like, oh, oh is this it? It happens yeah. all the time. What did like, you do for uh, GERD? It's just the dietary thing. Huh. When you're eating like shit and drinking a whole bunch of Dr Pepper, you're more likely to have that shit, have that problem. And so, like, what I do. Is like when I feel like I'm eating like shit, I'll reset and I'll do nothing but vegetables for like a week. And I mean, like when I and I don't even like how I cook. I air fry them, and I just I'm talking about potatoes, carrots, green peppers, red peppers, like green onions. I'll just I'll make it all throw into a big old pot, and that'll be my meal for like a week. And I'll do that like twice, and it just cleans you out and resets your entire system. It's wild. I learned that shit while I was vegan. Uh, honestly, <clears throat> raw vegetables is like the most healthy shit that there is for, and potatoes are some of the best foods. Do you miss it? Do you miss being vegan? No, no. Um, I, I think in the back of my mind, I know it's like extremely healthy for you. Like the health, I could literally reverse. There's massive evidences that that say uh, it could reverse heart disease. It could reverse diabetes. It could reverse a uh, type one diabetes. It could reverse a lot or type twos i'm sorry type two diabetes it can reverse a lot of of symptoms of of uh symptoms that ail us i mean uh diseases that ail us and i think it's extremely unethical factory farming uh even though i don't fuck with animals i don't like them we are horrible to them ethically um but that's the part i miss about it it's that me being okay with what's going on but just me being a part of society. Like, I got to know it's wrong, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's like, here's what it is. That's probably how niggas felt about slavery back in the day. Like, 
This is wrong, but you know, it is what it is. I no think I, I think there's a good chance that I don't know, 100 years from now, 200 years from now, our great great grandchildren will be like, I can't believe that you guys had all these giant farms filled with just animals and you used to just slaughter them and eat them every single day for for your meals. And yeah. I'll be like, yeah, they were very, they were delicious. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy this, good. Right now, what we're saying, this is definitely, if there's ever a statue built of Arian Foster, they're going to take <laughs> it down in 150 years. Some like woke, some woke college students are going to listen to this podcast <laughs> and be like, actually, Arian Foster was a bad guy. Or, or you're like, <laughs> you're you better. Not left enough. You're yeah. at the Thanksgiving table and like your grandchildren, like our uh, factory farming grandpa was going off about how delicious it was. Yeah. Yeah. I actually think the big one is going to be like maybe in 500 to 1,000 years or like when AI gets super advanced, mistreatment of uh, like automated services like yelling at siri like <laughs> like because we literally have a like robot i don't think that's ever ever gonna be a thing. when ai becomes sentient i'm just saying like did you you know abuse Bro. technology okay what's the next thing are you gonna abuse a table are you gonna abuse a wall it's an inanimate object for oh. until they become sentient sentient they do not deserve sentient rights we are all sentient so that's it's gonna be like non like non biological being uh like non like biological being ist. It's like <laughs> you 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 discriminate against non biological beings. That's like that's what it's gonna be. When somebody looks it. at their remote, like a dad looks at the remote. I hate the stupid fucking thing. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be punished for that. Like I rather have a a real wife, a biological wife, and not a robot wife. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get weird. Uh, a quick change of pace here because this is some breaking news that's happening right now. Big T, I don't know if you're seeing what's going on with soccer. With soccer. Yeah. This is some wild shit. So uh, at the World Cup this year, Greg Berhalter, our team manager, didn't play Gio Reyna. There are a lot of different explanations given for why. One of the best players on the team, if well, you don't follow soccer. Yeah, he's one of the best players on the team. He's, um, would you say he's a star in the Bundesliga? Yeah. He's, he's a very good player. Um, very young, but he didn't play hardly at all. I think he got in for like, what, Maybe 10 minutes? Uh, he got into two games for probably a total of 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, one of our best players. So everybody was trying to figure out why he didn't play. Apparently, um, according to um, the, the manager, he was being a little shit during some of the scrimmages when he was told that he would have a, a limited role, that he would not be a starter. Um, and so there was a lot of back and forth, back and forth going on about it. Apparently, Gio Reyna's parents... And Gio Reyna's dad is Claudio Reyna, the captain. Also played for the U.S. national team. Former captain of the U.S. national team, who's a really, really good player in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, his dad, I guess, threatened to blackmail the manager of the team, Greg Berhalter, with information that Greg Berhalter got arrested back in like when he was, what, 18 years he, old? He didn't get arrested. He had a physical incident with his now wife. With his now wife. So they were like 18 or 19, I think. Yeah. And um, they were fighting outside of a restaurant. They were both drunk. And I think he like kicked her in the shin. He said he kicked her. Yeah. He kicked her in the shin. And he was 18. They, they broke up. They got back together. And they've been, I guess, happily married ever since. So Claudia Arena was trying to he was sending information about this to the United States Soccer Federation trying to get Greg Berhalter either fired or his contract not renewed and then uh Claudia Reyna's wife was also involved in this uh, allegedly Danielle she says that she reported the 1991 domestic violence incident involving US MNT coach Greg Berhalter to the United States Soccer Federation sporting director Ernie Stewart after Berhalter's post World Cup comments on Geo so after the World Cup, the manager, Burhalter made comments that he alleged were in private and off the record saying why Gio didn't play, that he was being a little shit in these scrimmages. And after that, his mom reported the incident to U.S. soccer, the domestic violence incident. And now she's saying, I want to be very clear. I did not ask for Greg to be fired. I did not make any threats. And I don't know anything about any blackmail attempts. Sounds like she does. Sounds like that's exactly what she was doing. That's okay. all this. Why, do you remember? I think it was you and I were sitting there. It may have been the, I, I forget what game it was. Maybe Iran. But we were like, they, they've they got to have some, like, he has, they must have some sort of blackmail or something for him to not be playing Gio Reyna. Yeah. And it turns out. 
That's what it was. There was well, this is like reverse black man. Right, yeah, yeah, I guess. Well, we said like maybe he was a game show voice right there. Holy shit. <laughs> Turns out. Maybe that's what it was. He was and we said like maybe he was in a fight with his dad or something. Yeah. Cra uh Claudio Reyna just came out with a statement. I support my wife Danielle in her statement. I too was upset by Greg's comments about Geo after the US was out of the World Cup, and I also appealed to Ernie Stewart on December eleventh, asking him to prevent any additional comments. While in Qatar, I shared my frustrations about my son's World Cup experience with a number of close friends, Ernie and Brian McBride among them. However, at no time did I ever threaten anyone, nor would I ever do so. I mean, it is so classic that a soccer player kicks someone. That's such a soccer player move. There you go, Billy. That's totally. That's, that's we we love we love Billy's analysis. I mean, on these situations, uh, especially a woman. I don't think this. Who do you think this looks the worst on? I think it looks bad on Claudio and yeah. uh, his wife, Danielle, Claudio Reyna, because, um, I mean, it's obviously never a good idea or it should you should never kick a woman if you're a man. Um, that's, For sure. That's, I think that almost goes without saying, but I will say it anyways. I it was, both sides. It was, <laughs> it was 1991, and it sounds like it was it seems to have been a one time incident that they moved on from and they were like 18 at the time again you should not kick a woman even if you're an 18 year old guy but it sounds like something that they moved on from and uh it was only brought to it was used as a weapon this the domestic violence thing was used as a weapon against greg berhalter after not playing somebody's son so they come off in this looking like the worst types of helicopter parents and i feel i honestly feel bad for geo having to deal with all this shit. Like, he probably didn't ask for this. He was probably pissed off um, that he wasn't playing. But now he's got to deal with the fact that now he's going to be labeled as, like, his dad is coming in trying to fight all these battles for him. And that's not a good look for him either. It's crazy. Yeah. It is wild. Yeah. I mean, every team's got something like this where, like, a, there's one player on the team whose parents lobby behind the scenes. Helicopter. And I, I guarantee you that Gio and, and Danielle are probably the type of parents that like talk about how out of control parents get in sports. It's usually the same people in it, my experience. You just don't normally see this. And I guess it kind of makes sense because Rain is what, 20, 21? So he's college aged. Like this sounds like some college shit. You rarely see this in professional sports. Yeah. I guess like uh, what's Lonzo Ball's dad's name? Lamar. LeVar. LeVar Ball. Ball. Like, but it's pretty rare. Yeah. But I guess like Reyna is college age kid, so, so. they're still kind of helicopter parents. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a bad it's honestly a bad look for U.S. soccer too to like have a former player that's manip trying to manipulate things behind the scenes. Our our whole situation's in disarray. There's one thing you can count on with U.S. soccer is after a World Cup, there will be a post mortem that comes out and. Everybody involved is going to look like a bunch of weirdos that we're all fighting with each other. Feels good, though. We haven't gotten to do it for eight years. That's true. So That's stay tuned till 2026 uh, when, if and when we lose, it will be in front of our own fans. Yep. And I'm sure we'll have a big explanation ready. And God, this is just so crazy. What city is it going to be? It's in a bunch. Three countries, actually. Oh, yeah. They're doing yeah, continents. Yeah. Now. It's like Atlanta, Miami, New York, Dallas, Houston, LA there's several so FIFA could get you know three countries bribing them for the price of one World Cup yeah three birds one stone oh and also Greg Berhalter came out like two days ago and issued a statement saying like somebody was trying to he got out in front of it he got in front of it he, he said what he said what happened Eminem style yeah he was like I got a, here's all the dirt on me I am white <laughs> yeah, that's what he's, that's how it started. I am white, an essay by Greg Berhalter. That's the start of the Eminem eight mile from case. Yep. Any? He... I would pay. Uh, I generally despise this whole celebrity boxing phenomenon we're going through right now, but I'd pay really good money. Let, let's do them rough and rowdy. I'd pay really good money to watch Greg Berhalter and Claudio Reyna fight. Soccer players just kick. It's not necessarily true, Billy. They're foot fairies. Foot fairies. <laughs> What's that? Is that still okay to say? I don't know. Yeah. No, it's it's like a joke. It's amongst okay. Athletes. Got it. Right, it was a joke. Um, he said amongst he said amongst us athletes. 
No, not us. I just amongst athletes. Oh, uh, I thought you said amongst us athletes. <laughs> yeah, 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 us too. Same athletic <laughs> level, totally. Yeah, us, us shoving athletes over here. No, I just, I mean, it could be. I just might have missed that boat. You know what I mean? No. I got um, I got catfished uh this weekend. Oh yeah, tell us about it. Yeah. yeah, so you ever go to like an Airbnb, and I have my kids with me, and. So I'm looking to have a nice spot. It's relatively safe, relatively, you know, like modern, you know, just so the kids can have a good time. Uh, have my shorty with me. It's all good. I'm looking through the app, the Airbnb. I was like, oh, this looks fancy as shit. This looks amazing. Like the pictures look amazing. Everything looked good. And, na- and naturally, like when you're scrolling through like Airbnb, how often do you check to see if there's a TV? You know what I mean? It's just like one of those things where yeah, I I have I have I, I go to libraries and see TVs. I just it's w- what you expect inside of walls nowadays. And I go and we get there and it's just the oldest fucking house you can ever. It's just you walk and it creaks. There's people upstairs. Walls are paper thin. No TVs. Just like a couch, an old ass fireplace, and they had these board games that were old as shit. And it's just like, yo, we really just got catfished. But I didn't feel like booking, so we, <clears throat> we just ended up uh, staying there. But it ended up being really cool for the simple fact, like since there was no TV, we had to interact as humans. And so uh, we ended up going to Target and getting, um, it was Target, if you fancy. You bought a um, TV. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 no, that'd be wild, just dog. Like, you're, you're, yeah. you're welcome, you pieces of shit. <laughs> uh, uh, we ended up getting this dope. Show. I don't know if you ever played, but it's called um, it's like murder mysteries. Oh yeah. So it's like it's, yeah, it's like it's like a box full of like a whole bunch of clues. They they list the, like what you know what what what's going on the scenario, and you have to figure out who killed who. And uh, it, it ended up being really fun. And so me and my kids were all sitting there at you know ten eleven p.m. trying to figure out who killed who, and it was exactly. We we guessed it, but we guessed her husband actually. It was the, it was the well, her, her, we guessed her her. It doesn't matter. You know what the fuck I'm talking about. So anyway, that was my catfish Airbnb story. Uh, quick side note on mysteries. Have you like if you want a good movie to watch, check out Glass Onion. <gasps> yes, really so good. good. Yeah. So really good, good. So good. So good. So good. Really? Oh, you seen the first one though, right? Really good. No, I, I liked it. Before, before this fucking negative guy talks, have you seen the first one? Yes, I, I know. Well, I, don't I know saw the first, first one. It was predicated off the first. So the first one is fire. So we've been we had been waiting for this shit to come out. Me and my kids, and so the first one's called Knives Out. Oh. We'll watch the first one. Knives Out, and it's just as it's fucking dope, bro. It's oh dope. shit, that's it's actually dope. I'm so hyped. Yeah. Is anything spoiled? Yeah. From Wait, the first no, no, one? don't say anything because no, 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 I haven't no, no, seen no, no, any no. of them. The it's, only it's an entirely new cast. It's besides, an entirely new cast. Besides, yeah, yeah, the, Benoit Blanc. The detect- Blanc. Yeah, the, 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 the detective is the same, but he's just revered as like one of the best detectives in the world. That's that's oh. the only, it's a brand new, brand new mystery. Nothing's mm-hmm. you, you, you're gonna watch the first one and, and fall in love with it. Just oh, like it's hell yeah. yeah, the first one's I'm so good hyped. too. I'm a big Daniel Craig guy, so I gotta I gotta get yeah. on that. I but skipped out on that? Knives Out for a long that's time. That's Benoit Blanc, the detective. Oh yeah, he's James he's, Bond. He's, yeah, he's, he's James he's Bond. Fine. Yeah, he's Glass fine. Onion. I like a, I like a better detective. Yeah. Glass Onion, I thought was really really good. I really liked Glass Onion. I also have a low bar for entertainment, but I like. No, it it's a, a good. Lot. It's a it's a good movie, man. It's a mm-hmm. it's a great movie, man. Like, Knives Out was great. Mm-hmm. There's yeah, a lot of good Knives cameos out. in it too. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. Yeah, uh, I'll get it was, on that. That I don't want, I don't want to say it was some spo- uh, spoil it, but it was just really dope. Mm-hmm. Playing murder mystery, Although, in a squeaky I house. Seen the, I yeah no it was really it was, that was really weird mm-hmm. yeah uh, but I, I haven't seen the dude who um who owned the glass onion oh I'm Edward Norton I hadn't seen him since I don't know if y'all remember you definitely don't remember that uh, PFC Mike you remember that movie uh, Primal Fear Edward yeah. Norton yeah Bruh, Primal Fear was I don't know how it is now but I remember it being really dope I think I was in like high school when it came out or right before high school but I remember that movie being really he like acted his ass off I remember, but I haven't seen him since then I mean, maybe I've been off the he's got a ton movie, of stuff he was the Hulk first Probably. for me that movie kicked ass that Primal Fear was mm-hmm. uh, he yeah. was like he went on a nice little stretch of um, I guess drama thrillers for a while so like Primal Fear he was in that he was in Fight Club Mm-hmm. He was in. Uh, hey, I've never seen. I've never seen Fight Club. Oh, you got to watch Fight Club. 
It's good. I'm watching. Christmas movie. And uh, it's a Christmas movie? Die Hard? I was just, I got Die Hard and Fight Club. Fight, I like that though. I like that take. Fight Club Fight and Club Bruce. Fight Club is a Christmas movie. movie. And, and then Bruce, was, Willis, Bruce Willis dead at that in some clip uh, 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 this year. He was on some reward stage and he was like, Die Hard is not a Christmas movie. Bruce Willis dead at that shit. Damn. Um, there was also uh, what 25th Hour. That's a good movie too. Is 20, that Edward Norton in it? I think so, yeah. 25th Hour with Edward Norton and Tony Sergusa, R.I.P. He was in that movie too, I believe. Um, e. Really good movie. Uh, all right. You guys want to get into today's topic? Yes. All right. Today's episode, guess guess who it's brought to you by? Some of my favorite people in the world. Nom, part, nom, nom. Part Jesus. of my cheesesteak. Oh, hell yeah. Oh. Yeah. Part of my cheesesteak. Have you had a, a part of my cheesesteak this year, <laughs> Billy? Yes, I have, actually. Did you? Yes. When? There was one at the office on Sunday. There was one? And I ate it. I know because I ordered that one and I ate it. Uh-oh. There was another one. No, I, I didn't see another one. Wait, so you ate it? Billy, do not personally endorse products you haven't used. I ate, I ordered a part it's of a my steak and I ate it Billy style, as a matter of fact. Ladies and gentlemen. I put the last. Wait, where's the crime? Are you saying I ate your cheesesteak? No, he's saying you're lying. I'm <laughs> saying you're lying. I don't think that you no, had no, a cheesesteak this year. No, I had one. Year. No, you didn't. No, I actually didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I actually had a cheese. Uh, never he mind. He saw yeah. the cheesesteak. Billy lies about literally everything. I didn't know it's if you wild. wanted me to lie. It's crazy. No, but like, seriously, that was one of those things where I thought you're, you're just throwing up a lob for the. We can like cut this, but we're like throwing it up for the advertiser. No, <laughs> I don't lie about this stuff. I actually ate one on Sunday before the game started. <laughs> like, and it was delicious. I ate one. I, I had. I, I thought, what the fuck? That was that was a bit of a bully move. I'm not yeah, gonna come lie. on. That was, that, was, that was a bit of a bully move. Like, what the fuck? I got Jake on one of these. Well, I just asked if you had had one this year, and you could have said no. I haven't had one this year, but I'd like to have one. Man, uh, I had a Billy style, which is I put really hot hot sauce on it, and then I lied about it later. And uh, it was a. <laughs> it was, it was a bet. I was I was going up against Sean Evans in um, our semifinals for a fantasy league, and I'd beaten him a couple weeks ago. And uh, so he said he's a big fan of yours, Billy. By the way, uh, Sean Evans from, from Hot Ones. And so he he wanted to he put a, a bet on the line to have his cheesesteak Billy style. So he sauced it up with the last dab, choked it down. Uh, he was a man of his word. So I just put a little bit of the last dab hot sauce on there. It was delicious. Uh, you too can get involved with Part of My Cheesesteak. It's a delivery and pickup only restaurant brand bringing you craveable cheesesteaks and loaded fries. They are delicious. I had one uh, just this last weekend. Fantastic way to start my NFL Sunday. It's now available in hundreds of select locations nationwide with new locations being added every single week. Part of My Cheesesteaks menu features 6-inch and 12-inch classic cheesesteaks, Chipotle cheesesteaks or buffalo chicken cheesesteaks, plus loaded fries and dessert brownie bites. Get lunch, dinner, or late night delivery. And we're open seven days a week. Go to partofmycheesesteak.com. You can learn more. Order now on DoorDash, Uber Eats, Postmates, or Grubhub. Check them out, partofmycheesesteak.com. Shout out Part of My Cheesesteak. I love Part of My Cheesesteak. I'm going to have one this weekend on my cheat day on Sunday. How about that? Because I am getting in good shape right now. I've just been eating tons of steak and eggs. Yeah. Just like I, I figured out on Uber Eats, I can get steak and eggs for $15 to the office. Mm-hmm. If you missed it and didn't get the new Uber Plus thing by converting all your rewards points that you never knew what to use for, mm-hmm. it's like pretty sweet. So that's how I'm trying to get jacked. I got a crock pot for Christmas. I'm just going to go Jack frat boy and make a ton of chicken. Or crack. You know, Maddie. I know. I'm re- And I was so pumped about it. It was my favorite Christmas present this yeah. year. <laughs> You get no, we start getting, you start getting, start getting real excited about household appliances. And I got, cur- co- I got cookbooks for it. I was so pumped about it. it's really, it, it really aged me. I was pumped though, so I have a crock pot now. I got a coffee maker. Oh, that's so exciting! I, yeah, I got a coffee maker, and I actually, uh, I've never really drank coffee before, but I got a coffee maker. I really like foaming milk. Billy, yeah. I got milk a, foamer. I got a frother. It's on the way. I'm so excited. Dude, I love frothed milk. I used to drink like hot milk as a child, but now like I can drink hot milk and like be an adult. I got a frother. I'm so excited to use it. And actually, real shout out. I stole some K cups from work, uh, Stella Blue, and they're it's an amazing coffee. Mm-hmm. I'd never drank coffee before. Stella Blue. Stella Blue is great. It's like I like never drank coffee, and now I'm drinking Stella Blue every morning, mm-hmm. legitimately, medium roast, mm-hmm. Electric Avenue. Yeah. Nice, Billy. 
Are you sure that you actually drank it? Yes, I actually did. Okay. I can I can show you my. I d- I do <laughs> believe you because you did admit to stealing it. So yeah. Mm. Unprompted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unprompted. Okay, Idaho. Idaho. Let's talk Idaho. Um, mm-hmm. This has been a case that's been unfolding the last several weeks here, and it's captivated a lot of people's minds because they, I guess it was a uh, it was a young group of college kids that tragically were were stabbed in their own um, their own house. I think four people were murdered. Mm -hmm. There were two other people that were in that house that were downstairs that uh, fortunately were not attacked during this. But it it happened right before winter break on campus or just right off campus at the University of Idaho in Moscow, Idaho. And um, people have been trying to figure out what's going on because in a case like this, it usually gets wrapped up within hours, you know, maybe maybe a day or two because it's it's 99 percent of the time um, somebody that's very closely related to everyone. Uh, if somebody's like taking a knife and going to, to stab people, it's usually a crime that's committed um, out of emotion or out of rage. And those are things that are tied to somebody that you know and have a relationship with. So after like interviewing everybody that had been around these people, uh, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, things like that, uh, they kind of hit a, hit a brick wall and nobody knew what was going on. But they just made an arrest last, um, last Friday. Friday yeah. I believe they arrested the guy. Mm-hmm. And so they caught him after. Uh, I guess they he, he drove across country to Pennsylvania. Yeah, but he he went to school at Washington State, which is really close. It was like fifteen minutes away. The guy's yeah. name is that they the alleged killer. We respect due process. His name is Brian Christopher Koberger, and he was a criminology PhD student. He didn't have a PhD, but he was currently enrolled in the program, and he finished the semester. Um, I'm going to say I think the reason. The, the Moscow police got a lot of flack during this whole uh, episode because they were being so uh, tight-lipped on everything and everyone thought they basically had no leads, nothing. But apparently they knew about this guy a week after. Uh, and it had a lot to do uh, with the white Hyundai Elantra that he drove. But let's let's when we're talking about these things, we tend to get very wrapped up about the killer. Just really want to acknowledge Ethan Chapin, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Kaylee Gonzalez. 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 Yeah. Um, but because their story, it's like this case was has become very popularized amongst people in my age group, college age group, because the story of what they were doing that night, their situation is very commonplace in american colleges yeah across the country like the stuff they were doing the situations they were in you know an off-campus rental house where everyone bunks up you know people just cr- like cr- you know it's it's a it's a environment that as someone who went to college and recently and like and I, it's probably the same with everyone who's gone to college like it's a scenario where you think that you're very safe yeah and I think it resounded with a lot of young people because it was just so crazy and, you know. Yeah, it was scary. The specifics are. It's scary. And it's, it's uh, I, didn't, I guess, relatable to a lot of people that are that are going through a similar experience at college. Um, like, oh, my God, what if somebody broke into my place? Like, it's something that you would start like to think a about. Random. A random person did it, which makes it so scary. Uh, this is, it's also, I'm going to sound like a boomer. It's also a major indictment of TikTok in general, this, this case. Because uh, the aftermath of it, when people were trying to figure out what was going on, you saw it. It went uh, all over Reddit. It was all over TikTok. People were trying to figure out who did this. It, it became almost like a game for a lot of people, and people were coming up with theories almost immediately right afterwards. So, uh, and a, a lot of those went mega viral. There was a neighbor that had walked by the house, uh, walking his dog. And they interviewed him right afterward or the next day asking like, oh, what's going on with this this neighbor of yours? Like, do you know anything about the house where all these murders took place? And the guy was like socially awkward and didn't know how to speak to a reporter or speak to the camera. And uh, so that interview went out and people all like jumped down this guy's throat and they're like, this is the murderer right here. And it yeah. like all these theories went viral and shit. This guy was just like, wait, what? I was just I was walking my dog and I I saw a reporter and the reporter asked me questions and so i tried to answer them the best that i could he was wearing like long sleeves um like a, a sweatshirt that had a hole cut out for his thumbs 
which is I you see that a lot place. Yeah, you see that a lot, especially like in cold cold cities yeah. or whatever. So it's got like a, a sleeve cut out for his thumbs and uh, on the sleeve of his uh, his wrist. And so some people are like, it looks like he's got bandages on his hand. Like that's that he's probably the guy that was using the knife. And then there was other surveillance footage that came out and people were accusing yeah. somebody that was like waiting in line I, at a food truck. Yeah. So there's this kid, Jack show. No, we should. Can we, the thing is these people have gone. So I've been looking through a very toxic Reddit researching this and the only like these people have gotten enough they want to be left out of the media like these people have been really witch hunted down and now since this guy has been accused they're getting their revenge like you have a girl who like it posted in the reddit like are you guys going to apologize to my boyfriend who you like they should th- and like really gone after so like let's not even bring no, any I, more I, attention i, th- to I their think names. i think it's we don't have to like say their names you yeah. know okay. but there but there are specific examples like the, the neighbor guy that was just talking to the news and he I think he said that he um, was like on the spectrum or maybe I just read something that said that he was uh, like he was slightly on the spectrum um, and he's socially awkward. And now you've got tens of thousands of, of people and his peers thinking he's a murderer like that's fucked up. That's that's what makes like TikTok. It's great. I love TikTok. And when I start like surfing the algorithm wave man i'm cowabunga like i fucking love that shit and it gets addicting it's convincing but, too but, but it's people need to realize i think that most of the stuff that you see on there is just completely bullshit people i Aaron, i know that you've talked about this before we need to teach media literacy to to kids in school and even if you tell somebody like hey this is bullshit they'll be like no you're just being a boomer like tiktok is like that's where I get my news. Most of it is just like completely made up. There's there's some good sources that you can that you can find if you do a good enough job like vetting stuff. But most of it is just like complete bullshit that people make up. Yeah, who would believe that stuff? Fr- yeah, I who? Think, yeah. Billy, I think Billy, the most frustrating. Billy, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say Billy definitely like looked into some of these guys that were being accused. No question. Well, during during it was going on, but I didn't I, I didn't blog any of them or tweet any of them. Thank you. <laughs> but I think, I think it's the, the most frustrating part about it is like nobody's going to learn any kind of lesson from this, right? It's the it's because media and entertainment are now interwoven. And so there's no, I've been saying this shit for years, there's just no remedy for this shit. The only remedy is to educate your children, dog. That's that they're going to save themselves from this shit because we're already... We're, we're already, like, if you look at what's going on in the circus in Congress, or if you look at, like, just everything in the worldwide stage, we're all victims of this new tool, which is social media. And you don't educate people on it in the middle of their lifespans because they got it correct, right? So you have to educate them young, like, how to vet information, how to source information. And the most important thing is stay out of business that don't have anything to do with you. Like that shit, that would cure a lot of this shit. Just stay out of, stay out of this people's business, man, unless you have pertinent information and you can give proper information to authorities who are working on this, right? If if it's that, that makes sense. But if it's not, bro, stop talking about it. Don't share it. That's why I never I never share fight videos. I never share like any anything because it doesn't do anything to help, bro. I'm not a fucking detective. I'm not. That's fun. I like to think I am, but I'm not a detective. Think your thoughts, leave that shit off your page. That's the best remedy for this shit. Smart, <clears throat> yeah. smart. But a lot of people like kid, when kids are are seeing this, it's like natural for them to get worked up about something because it it does become almost like like a a mystery show to them, or it becomes like an Dang. episode of Law and Order. Let me, let me and, walk something back because I think saying, there's yeah. there, no. no I'm, I said let me walk something back because there is uh there is value in mass sharing things, but there's a way to remain neutral on it. Like say a kid goes missing or something like that, right? And like like that kind of shit definitely adds value like right that, that shit is valuable like that kind of mass sharing I, I think is 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 a positive but it's when it becomes when you start in injecting your own what you think is going on it that's when it becomes dangerous and like there's definitely it's not black and white there's gray areas so it's like but i just wanted to there is value in sharing shit like that I'm, i just don't want to leave out the positives of the shit so yeah. no i i think that you're absolutely right when it's a missing person um, I, I remember seeing some of the Casey Anthony interrogation stuff and uh, they were talking about how they they like using the media. The media can be a big help for them in certain aspects, but also the media can like throw gasoline on, on a fire. And that's kind of what happened with uh, with this case where they were get they got a lot of tips or a lot of like citizen 
sleuths out there that were trying to figure out who was responsible for this. And they went down a lot of really stupid rabbit holes and started accusing everybody. There was so that one person, we won't say their name, uh, but they were like on camera with some of the girls uh, outside of a food truck. Yeah. Right. Right before the right before the murder happened on their way home from the bars. And he was like, there was a guy that was kind of like lingering around next to them. And then the girls left without him. And then everyone's like, this guy gives me incel vibes. Like he committed this murder because these girls wouldn't talk to him or didn't go home with him. In that Twitch stream, which is something that's now commonplace around some of these food places, is just there so people know if there's a line or not, which is yeah. something like that's like a modern thing. Like it could be anybody sitting there on the Twitch stream. And it's one of those things where I don't know, a lot of accusations got turned around that I think neighbor you were talking about ended up writing a whole like there's this one Reddit page that really I think it's like called Moscow Murders. And this guy just posted a whole like biography about himself to try to absolve himself. And that probably made them more suspicious. Yeah. Well, they're I, like, look how much this guy's interacting with what, us. What you said about Casey Anthony and the media, the media used to be journalists. But now the media is anybody on TikTok who wants to create a page about this quadruple homicide, and now they can just spew whatever they want. Yeah. And and then you go on TikTok Live and people see, oh, I'm interested in that. And now you have 2,000 people watching you, and you become a source, in yeah. air quotes, for this thing that you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of? You guys might not remember this. This might be before your time online. But there was, uh, when, when the Boston bombing happened at the marathon... Uh, and they they tracked down those brothers uh, that were responsible for it. There was a big free Jahar movement online that sprung up about the kid that got arrested. And there were some people saying, like, this is not true. He's been set up for all this. And uh, but it was people that had no connection whatsoever. It just became like a fan page for uh, for Jahar. And then there were celebrities that like rose out of that because they were the loudest, uh, most visible people in that movement. And then they gained a following. So whatever they said about the case became known as fact. And there was just like a massive, massive, almost like a brand new news channel of, of nothing but complete bullshit that happened based on one person letting letting temporary internet fame get to their head. And then now all of a sudden that person's looked at as like a trusted source of information, which is what happened with a lot of these people on like the Reddit threads or uh, on TikTok that became people's go to sources for information about this case in Moscow, but they had no idea what was going on. And then there were also a bunch of people that uh, complained to the police that the police weren't releasing like enough information during the investigation and that was frustrating, which might be true. Uh, and if you're a student at the University of Idaho, you're probably, you don't feel safe because you don't know what they're researching when it came to this guy. You don't know if he's still part of the community. You don't know, and I'm saying he because like the entire time we knew it was a guy, right? Like that was pretty clear. Yeah, knife crime. Yeah, it's it's a guy. Girls stab a lot too. Do they? Girls I mean, stab that, out of self defense they, a lot of times. Well, that only that OnlyFans model. Okay. Only fans model? okay yeah. Girls, do, you said girls stab a lot too. That's just not true. I mean, th look up I, there's look actually, up knife crimes. Knife I wanted crimes, to, I'll, I'll look up knife crime breakdown by gender. Domestic domestic disputes. Knives get. I'm just that's, saying. That's, I'm not going to say that you said it's not girls stab a lot too. That's just not true. I'm just saying it's not only men use knives. Lady Macbeth. Aren't, 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 men, <laughs> aren't men like responsible for like 90 plus right, percent of the right, crimes? Right, like right. It's, so when you say a lot too, it's just like. Eh. Well, it's just because it came to my head. There's literally like three only, I think two examples of OnlyFans models stabbing people. Well, isn't that I've heard of? Yeah. And they're both women, but that's probably because like every OnlyFans model is a woman. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just, just saying. It would be a small percentage of I, I, stabbings. I'm just saying it's not out, totally out of there. Okay. Unless you're an OnlyFans model. <laughs> Men and OnlyFans models. Those are the only <laughs> okay, two people boom. that stab. Yeah. Uh, but so. I do feel bad for the people that got like caught up in this, in this internet investigation. And have you guys seen, this is going to sound stupid. Have you guys seen the new episode or the new season of Dexter? No. No, that, that's. Yeah, it's better. It's better than the end of the last season. But in, in the new one, there's like a, a true crime podcaster that just like gets off on these murders and like investigating stuff. True, true crime has been so 
like you used to have to talk to actual detectives and like cops who like had the stories and they've been totally robbed of their like way to get girls through true crime stories through true crime podcasts. I actually had a conversation with a detective like recently about it. Wait, what do you mean? So I, th- I know a guy, he's a high level New York city, city detective. Okay. And he like has all these stories about all these like, uh, investigations he worked on. Um, I'm not gonna mention specifics, but he was like, yeah, he gets more. You guys aren't privy to those. No, no, he knows about them, but like now it's like this isn't. This guy's not a barstool sports security guard, right? No, no, not at all. Okay, just making sure. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. This, this guy's legit. This guy's on Billy's list. Uh, but anyway, he was he's like definitely a barstool sports security guard. He's not. I think it's. I think <laughs> yeah. it's more likely than not. He's not. You can ask any of them. I actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I don't want to say exactly what he is because then people could figure okay. out who he is. All right, so basically, wait, go on. so all these girls are listening to true crime podcasts, uh-huh. and now these detectives are like, "That was our thing before. We used to tell true crime stories, and it, we used to be like special because of that. Now anyone can pull up a podcast and listen to them." So detectives are. Wait, are you saying that uh, because true po- true crime podcast hosts are no longer doing the the legwork of interviewing detectives? That's cutting detectives off from being able to talk to single women. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's slowing the riz of cops. Yeah, yeah. It's slowing the riz. That, that's what I'm saying. All right. So what we need then is if you if you host a true tra- crime podcast and are a single woman, you should be interviewing detectives and, yeah. and getting primary sources it's, as opposed to just it's reading stuff. Seizing online. the means of production. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Which we are against on this podcast. So. All right, so talk, so talk to police officers if you're a single woman that hosts a true crime podcast. I, no, I, I can get behind show, that. Show them a little, exactly. show them a little love because you're, you're undercutting the business here. Yeah, show yeah. They, it's their stories. Uh, no, but actually, uh, they also said it caused more people to be more interested in their job. And it's actually been good PR for, for police. For police recently in a world of like... Well, they do... They do conduct important investigations. Yeah, and it sounds like they got, sounds like they got the right guy when it comes to this one. For so the thing is, uh, everyone's so critical of the Moscow police. Moscow police hadn't seen a murder in sixty years. This was their first murder scene in I think sixty years. So think about that. So we were actually I was talking to this person about the Moscow case recently, and uh, they're basically saying like, look, there was a lot of stuff done at the crime scene that. In New, you know, in New York City, would never be done. It would be sealed off, checking for footprints in the driveway, tire marks. The whole street would be shut down. It, a case of this, you know, s- serial killer variety, like because there could be copycat, there could be copycats. He could strike again. Like time is of the essence to catch this type of thing. Uh, everything would be sealed. Like s- the basically the precautions taken at the scene of the crime would have been much higher. And you know, much more specific. But Moscow police didn't even know what they were dealing with because uh, at the first call, and we can get into the the timeline uh, in a second. But since then, they did. I think why it took so long for them to get this guy is because they were taking their time gathering enough evidence to make sure they get him to have damning evidence. Because like the thing is, we see all these trials, OJ, Casey Anthony. You know they. They moved faster than making sure they dot all their I's, you know, crossed all their T's and ended up didn't getting these people. And there so, wasn't you know, a lot of evidence to begin with in some of the cases. Right, that, right, right. Know, I, I mean, it was definitely I his son, not OJ. Um, but I, like, was, I, it, I think it was a <laughs> <laughs> No, but they wanted to really make sure they got this guy. Um, and the thing is, so this is, uh, I'm going to only... I'm not going to go into a lot of rumors of the case. I'm going to go to specifics that led to this guy uh, getting incarcerated, uh, t- technically in detention right now. But it all started on a typical college Saturday night. These four all were uh, out in separate places. You had a couple, Ethan Chapin and Zana, who went to a frat party uh, at 8 o'clock. You had uh, Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonclaves, who was at a bar. Typical college Saturday night. They all go out. Uh, Ethan Chapin and Zana Carnodal are back at the apartment at around 1 a.m. Uh, Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonclaves are seen, Gonzalez, are seen at a a truck eating food at about 1.40 and at some point come back to the apartment. Uh, 
these four crashed in two separate beds, uh, the couple in one bed and Maddie, Madison and Kaylee in another bed. Madison and Kaylee were, you know, very good friends having a sleepover, even though they had all their separate beds. Um, at some point in early Sunday morning, these four were brutally stabbed by a Rambo type knife. Their bodies weren't found until 11 o'clock the next day because like a class after classic Saturday night, everyone sleeps in, no one really gets going and is doing anything until later in the day. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, and the thing is, they were not the only ones in the house. There was two other individuals who slept in a different uh, part of the house that was, I think, beneath them mm -hmm. uh, with locked doors. Yeah, it was beneath them. Yeah. And basically, at the next morning, a friend, an individual, came to the house at 11 a.m., you know, just like checking up like, oh, you know, I haven't heard from these people. I'm just going to go stop by their house. And this is when the first 911 calls made. This individual goes into the house, runs out of the house, screaming, and then faints in the front of the driveway. The first 911 call is about an unconscious individual on the lawn in front of the house. Yeah. And this is where a lot of the stuff was sealed after of what exactly transpired next um, because there's been a gag or and it was an ongoing investigation, but the police arrived there and just woke up this and then there was more 911 calls and the police came but the two individuals below had apparently and they've been staying out of the media for you know good reason good reason for whatever is going on and because they probably would have been accused too yeah they were people were they people oh thought, yeah people yeah. thought that it was the girls the girls are not capable wounds. of this Girls aren't that mean. Girls aren't that girls. Girl, a single murder, possibly. I've actually heard a couple uh, horrific stories about like t girls that have teamed up with each other and they get into like we're uh, us against the world mode, and then they attack one person they perceive to be their rival. That happens more than you'd think in like high school, middle school, even. But like four people getting stabbed by a girl. Doesn't happen with the Rambo you, knife. Yeah, it doesn't happen. Are you talking like about the Slenderman killings? Yeah, there. Yeah, that was yeah, one of them. That was yeah. one. Yeah, they were like fourteen. That was yeah. really weird. That was we crazy. should do an episode on Slenderman. Yeah, and we should play the game. No thanks. Uh, so yeah, the, the two surviving roommates definitely got. They yeah. they were accused. got there or not by I don't think any reputable like sources or you know. But to the TikTok mm -hmm. sleuths that and, are like, well, and while certainly unfair, I guess it is the simplest explanation. I'm sure that they were, yeah, interviewed not by, fair at all yeah. to put their names in the media and say and accuse them of murder. Yeah, they, they were, didn't do. They were definitely interviewed the first. by police, yeah, like, for sure. uh, to yeah. see yeah. if they if they were involved in it. Definitely, if you're, uh, it's like if you see if there's a woman that's killed. Your first interview as a cop is probably going to be a boyfriend or a husband. Yeah. Because that's the most likely outcome for it. But yeah, if, if there's four people in a house. Think. You'd think, but sometimes police just miss that because the husband is a police officer and next one happens. People people thought. You're, you yeah. are going to just live out the rest of your life thinking that Casey Anthony's innocent. I don't think she's innocent. I just don't think that she's guilty. You don't have to be proven innocent. One That's thing, true. one thing that uh, is now pretty commonplace in these off-campus rental apartments is that every room has a lock uh, individually, and you know because sometimes there's parties in the house, and you know you want all your rooms locked. Yeah. And so these two individuals had their rooms locked downstairs. So. Yeah, uh, there was I had a roommate in college one time that that installed his own doorknob on his downstairs lock because one of uh, one of my friends um, that I was living with at the time had been in, in jail recently for just like a couple months. Didn't do anything that bad, but he had to go to jail. Uh, and so this random roommate did not trust my friend. And so every time he would leave his room, he would lock his door to make sure that nobody, like none of us could get in. And one time he went and took a shower and he locked himself out of his room. And then he had to like ask my friend who had been to jail if he knew how to pick a lock mm. to get him back into his room because he locked it because he was afraid of him. And then my buddy had to just break down his door 
What if it was a test to see if he did know how to break his lock, so he needed to get a new lock? <laughs> That's smart. I like that. That's I like that. Out. Can I like you break that. into this? That's smart. Well, it, the it, test it, lock. It backfired on him because he was. I actually think my friend, uh, my friend Pat Hard Factor Pat, had to be the one that broke down his his door. Had to just like run into it until it came <laughs> off the hinge. Um, but yeah, yeah. So people, they they were they had the rooms locked and they didn't hear anything. Probably because I I don't want to speculate, but. You guys My, ever, just real side note, side note. Do you guys ever think about that? How like the most prized possessions in, that you love in this world are like protected by a bolt like this big? You know what I'm saying? Like it's yep. it, doors are easy to break in. Like most doors. It's wild when you think about that door. Yeah. Well, that, you know, Small. front doors are a little better. It depends on what kind of door we're talking about here. Yeah, my actually. What's your guys' favorite door in the world? Oh. I, I have a, the, if the we, circular ones at the airports, the one that keeps keeps it pushing. Easy. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh okay. those are scary. I'm I'm afraid. I'm also, they go slow as shit. I, I, I guess you're unathletic. They're scary, but like if you if you're light on your feet, like most of athletes are, it's just nice, man. It keeps the the pace going. It's revolving. I'm Another. team sliding door. I, yeah, I like a sliding door. Big T's right. Though, like it, the airport revolving doors are infuriating one because i'm afraid i'm going to try sneak in at the last second and get caught in between the door and and the wedge and then two after i get in it moves so slowly that you you walk up to the glass pane and then you have to do this little like i was in one for two shuffle. minutes last week at jfk that's, it's that's tough. cat you can't he was I, not over for two minutes it, no, i'm not. telling you you should have seen how slow this thing was moving they go slow <laughs> outrageous it's about angle First of all, you never want to be in the front of it. You want to catch it at its end, and then you want to walk diagonally at a nice pace to you at the end. To you. I mean, I'm a beautiful. big fan of uh, of vault doors. Like you know the old refurbished banks. Like mm -hmm. you know old bank buildings are some of my favorite because for some reason banks never use them anymore, but they all have built-in vaults, and I think they're just some of the coolest buildings. They all are built to like not have a car go through the side of them. Like built to like hold shit. And like the bank vault doors in them are just fascinating to me. Those are, my, those are some of my favorite movies. The movies that you have a vault breaking in guy. You got to, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like everybody has that, where you put the ear thing to the metal and you hear the clicks. And it, I love those movies. Yeah, gotta have true. a bolt. I need a bolt guy in my life. Yeah, yeah if, bolt you, breaking bolt guy Bill, you got one. If you, if you know how to break into vaults, uh, hit us up. Uh, yeah. We'd like yeah. to interview you. You yeah. don't have one on your list? <sighs> You, know, you definitely do. Yeah. I I'm, tap, tap I've tap, 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 I hands up on me. I've neglected the list for a little, but they also don't have a underwater drone guy. Um, so. I think Billy, little word of advice to you. I think you got to start interacting with the list more. You got to. I, I you do. You got to give back to the list because I, otherwise, the list is just going to see you as like using them. I know, but I was I'll hoping you, that the what, list. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you're tired of Billy and his bullshit, come to Arian's list. <laughs> here, <at> Arian. <laughs> no, I was hoping the list would use each other, like because all these people are such a resource. Be a resource to each other and ask each other things. But we haven't gotten that that cohesion. I think you have to. You have to Facilitate that. Yeah, you so gotta I, facilitate the so community. So I facilitate by keep asking stuff to try have to get conversation. Right, you're, in, you're, in, you're in New York. You don't do shit. We get drunk on the weekends. Have, be like, yo, let's meet up at so and so. Let's meet up in public places, though. You know what I'm saying? Or, don't go to private places. Should get, I just have them over to my house? No. No, no, no I just said public places. <laughs> uh, you could also just do like an AMA, but like choose one person from the list to have. So if you have like a marine biologist, be like, we're going to have a QA with. A marine biologist from the list on well, Thursday we, night, and then everyone can ask. Do a weekly lunch that. and learn. <laughs> I just, I'll hop on. There's I'll a, hop on. I'm like, yo, me and Aaron want to do a. I'll hop on with you, bro. I'm, I, I think don't got I got I got to start the interview stuff again. It's, yeah, you need more people on the list. No, the interview <laughs> where I like interview people on the list, and then yeah. we also have a live chat. That was going great, but it's okay. you know it's maybe do that a again. lot of content to be involved in. Yeah, but you're working too hard, Billy. I'm concerned I, about you. The, I'm okay. a top 20 blogger. Right. I'm a top 20 blogger in this company while podcasting five to six times a week. Okay. Uh, so, let I mean. My favorite door is the one that's that shit, on the that Oval shit, Office. Yeah. Like, I beat that out full-time bloggers on the top 20 list. Full-time. You're the best in the world, goddammit, Billy. Like, <laughs> put some respect on it. <laughs> I really like, I really like, like a door with a good like doorknob. Yeah. 
a door knob makes or breaks a door for me. I like I like a good solid oak. I like an oak door, but that the door that gets you into the Oval Office that you see in movies and TV shows, mm -hmm. it's like the wall. It's a wall that swings in and it's so thick. It looks like a piece of cake almost. Yep. How that door opens up. I don't know whatever that door is, but if you if you give me a scene that has that door opening up and shutting solidly, you have my attention. Hey, I take it back. I got a new door. I love the trap doors like that are library cases. Oh. And you I was pull a say book. That. Yep. And that's, that's fire, dog. Yeah. Oh, my. I have a tra I have a trap door in my crib. It's not as cool, but it's like it's it's a it's a safe it's a safe house like a safe room. So it locks. You know what I'm saying? So that's the I got protocol for all my all my kids. Like if something pops off, hop into the safe room. That's great. Do you have a statue? You pull the head back. No, nah, it's moves. Just, I'm not gonna tell you where it is because then you know. Defeats the purpose, but it's not. It's not that Those, cool. It's not that cool. I definitely one day I'm gonna build my own house and just include a lot of childish stuff in it, like trap doors, vaults. Actually, vaults. What if I lock myself in my own vault? I don't think either one of those are childish. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like a like a, like a secret like a secret <laughs> lair, but not like a super villain lair. Just like a secret lair with like cool stuff, like maybe a bunker in it, and just like you don't have a Little Mermaid. <laughs> I think I have a mermaid in the basement. <laughs> no, bro. You don't remember the little mermaid? She had a, a cave full of like human gadgets and gizmos and shit. Yeah, yeah. El, El, Elza? Was Elza? No, it was Ariel. Oh, Ariel. I Ariel. Know, but Elza, wasn't she the evil one? Elsa was in Frozen. Yeah, those are two and different. In Ursula. 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 She, it was her lair? Uh, no, it was yeah. Ariel. She literally, because she would swim up to this to the shore and take artifacts of humans, or she would swim into like sunken ships, and she would take like artifacts that humans had. Huh. She was obsessed with humans, and she would take them back to her cave. So she had like forks and utensils and necklaces and all kinds of shit and shoes, and she couldn't wear them because she had fins. What a bum! Like shit like that. Damn. I just sent you guys one in the uh, group message. It's like a dresser, and the guy opens the dresser, and then there's two sliding doors. And it opens up into this like insane room with like a bar. Narnia, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I would like to have one of those. A little bit more sports breaking news just real quick. Did you see who Texas A&M has just hired as their offensive coordinator? No. Bobby Petrino. Really? Yeah. <laughs> tough, tough times over in College <laughs> Station right now. <laughs> That's that awesome. That door is fucking fire. That's Bobby Petrino. Hell yeah. Isn't that insane, Arian? That fucking door is great. That is Narnia. That's lit. <laughs> um, wow. Back to back to the topic at hand. Yes. Uh, interesting parts from the crime scene that came out much later is that uh, there was a dog there. And the dog came out totally unharmed and locked away and this is going to become sort of pertinent later in the story as well as a cinder block that was found outside of a window which many thought that it was used by whoever did it to peer in the window to figure out what was going on because mm -hmm. there were some high windows there was a parking lot sort of above the house which was sort of at the end of a cul-de-sac but it was kind of built into the hill so there was like a parking lot above it that you could come down, which many thought that's where whoever did it came from. Mm -hmm. um, a, an Australian shepherd was found skinned and filleted three weeks before the killing, which what? they concluded was not related to the homicide. We got to figure out who did that shit. Yeah, I'm not sure I believe that, by the way. No, yeah. I'm, they, it was reported three weeks before. There's like a separate, like, who the hell is skinning an animal? Because I... I think no, this I'm is, I, I'm saying I don't believe it was unrelated. Yeah. I'll tell you why I think it's unrelated later in the story, but I think that might have been some some Idaho shit where someone thought they shot a coyote. And but then you get up to it and realize you didn't shoot a coyote. Turns out that happens a lot. There was a woman who got in trouble. I did see this on TikTok who shot a wild dog that was a husky and she thought she shot a wolf. And she's actually like got charges for killing a dog, but like, why is there wild dogs out in the wilderness? Charges for killing a dog. Oh my god! <laughs> so wait, wait. So the, the skinned Australian Shepherd apparently has nothing to do 
with now let Colin me call cap yeah it might be so cap. i don't mind you get charged for killing a dog oh this is don't don't this is a bad take this is a bad take from you it's not a bad take what you eat for lunch it's, it's a, not a bad take not dogs what are you talking about? Oh, it's you had a, chicken. It's a you wild. had a, a cow. You had there's different. another animal. You, how's it do? It's never because you say it's different. It's another fucking animal, bro. It's insanity. I it's think, insanity to take somebody's freedom for killing something that you eat. I think you. I think she's okay. arguing that the the wild dogs were threatening livestock, so she might get out of it. But oh, she does. Free uh, Becca or whatever her name is. I just think that if you shoot a dog and then you skin the dog, that should probably be looked into. So we should take a look at that. That's different. That's not what I'm saying. You should that's, be asked a few questions fine. at that you point. Have a, yeah, you probably have a propensity to uh, kill things. Yes. Yeah, I would say so. Um, so anyway. So go on, Billy. Uh, I don't mind gossiping about the killer. Uh, okay. Or gossip away. But can you, can you actually hand me a, a water as you get into this gossip? Is it dry in here? Or is it me? It's a little dry in here. I've been getting parched. Yeah. I'm, Definitely, definitely dry. <laughs> no, but seriously, that's because I haven't had my lunch yet. Because I've got a big dry thing. January. I've got a big thing of kava waiting for me. Did you text or did you tweet about it? No, I haven't. I, I didn't want to start a, a flash a, mob. An insurrection at the kava. No, but I can. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'll just. I guess I'll just leave it there. Uh, all right, Billy, go off. So, uh, the police scoured the area about a week after the killings they went to a gas station owner and asked him to comb through all of his video camera surveillance from a uh, from atm uh from any cameras in the area atms gas station pumps everything and they caught a white hyundai elantra speeding um from that night from that night this is where i think they first got the tip of who the killer might be and i think the largest and basically i think from my calculations, they found that there was about 19,000 Hyundai Elantras in like a hundred mile radius registered through the university, Washington state, uh, various Wait, counties really? and municipalities. Quick, you, said, you, you said, uh, you said through my calculations, you calculated there's 19,000 Hyundais. Well, because I kept looking up how many Hyundais were there and there's no, like no one did the calculations, but like, there was, they said at one point that there was uh, 2,000 Hyundai Elantras registered to the University of Idaho, and there was this many in Moscow. Oh, I saw 90. 2,000 seems like a 90. lot. 90 white ones, maybe. 2,000 seems like, it, how many students go to school there? At the Idaho? University of Idaho, I'd imagine. It's just a lot. My guess 15, is 20,000, maybe. It's just a lot. And, uh, Actually, Barstool Sports was involved because they mm -hmm. saw a picture of a white Hyundai Elantra 12, in a 000. Barstool Idaho uh, video. So oh, there's okay. like Barstool Sports, if you don't know, has a Viceroy program where there's many uh, schools that have their own yeah. accounts where they can post content from there. How I got hired. How And Avery. How Mad Dog and, and Big got, T. And Big T. Oh, wow. I actually got into the Viceroy program after I left Barstool and I uh, created one for a whole league oh, that was you like a whole conference oh yeah. wow we how's it doing school. it's super really undrafted you undrafted billy i was redrafted <laughs> 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 i was i was uh regulated down a level billy's like regulated uh, billy. <laughs> Rel <laughs> relegated oh, relegated oh, i don't watch soccer billy's like ted williams when he left to go to fight in the military and then came back with a real bad math addiction you said you said you watched glass onion right yeah i'm not going to give away but there's a, a very critical part of the movie that made me think of you yeah oh <laughs> uh, whatever okay. um and if any, anyone see that's seen the movie uh, n knows if you know you know you ever you guys ever like to gum up with uh pre-workout i'm not a drug guy but that's nice to taste it. Mm. It doesn't yeah. make it hit any faster. Yeah, it does. No, it doesn't. Right in the bloodstream. <laughs> Just gum it up. Just gum it up. Um, you, you don't really work out as much as I do. That's fine. Dude, I literally worked out with you yesterday. And then you left halfway through before we did psycho. Yeah. Shit. So okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Quick, yeah, he dude, finished his workout faster than you did. No, he yeah. didn't. He it's just true, did one. 
set. Uh, no, that's okay. No, you want to try this again without lying? No, I'm not saying set. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just said whoa. I did one set. No, and left. I forgot. You did one exercise, like one set of sets, and then you left. I, yeah, I, I think I did like five set set. sets of bench. Not including, that's including warm ups. Yeah, yeah, including I did, yeah, I did 10 reps at 135 to warm up. And then I stepped it up. I'm to just saying, 185. We did nothing because it's not. Then I stepped it up to 205, and then I did 205 again. Then I did 185 again, uh -huh, and then I left. Uh -huh. And then yeah. and then Billy goes, "All right, you guys, what you want to do some real psycho shit?" And I was like, "That's my cue to leave." Is when Billy starts. To that's when we really built muscle. Introduce the psycho did, shit. I don't need to. You ever do the bench? If you guys, if you want to get your bench up. Um. Okay, I bench as much as you did last summer. No, you didn't. Yeah. The, the, you that's, remember you didn't max out. I had to help you on your max. I don't even care. No, you don't. I don't even care. No, that I doesn't know. matter. You don't. I don't. It doesn't matter. You don't care at all. Uh, but everybody else stuck around max and- Please don't print that he Hank, cared. <laughs> uh, stuck around. But there's this great deceleration lift where if you're benching and you're like, you're all gassed, like take a mid-level weight, like, yeah, use your work set and then just go slow on the decline five seconds from when you're locked out to your chest and then rep out. And then once you can, can't uh, keep pushing it back up, have your partner lift it up for you and just keep doing the deceleration. And it literally destroys your chest. I forget what it's called, but it's insane. Um, back to Brian Koberg. Okay. So Brian Koberg. Koberger. Was, Koberger was born in 1994 in Pleasant Valley, Pennsylvania. He was studying criminology at Washington State. And boy, did he leave some alleged internet paper trail. Okay. Brian Koberger posted in uh, on Reddit at our prisons and criminology student research participation needed. Hello, my name is Brian and I'm invited. This is on 191 days ago, which I think was in March of 2022. Hello, my name is Brian. I'm inviting you to participate in a research project that seeks to understand how emotions and f physiological traits influence decision-making when committing a crime. In particular, this study seeks to understand the story behind your most recent criminal offense with an emphasis on your thoughts and feelings throughout your experience. In the event that your most recent offense was not one that led to a conviction, you may still participate. Additional surveys are included after the open-ended section as to best understand your unique traits. The study should take about 15 to 20 minutes to fully complete. Your identity and all answers provided are completely confidential and the link to the survey is also an anonymous link. The research has been approved by the DeSales University IRB. Participants must be 18 years of age and older. If you opt to participate, you may terminate participation at any time and for any reasons. If you have questions about this research, you may contact the research team via email student investigator Brian Koberger at BK5781 at dsales.edu. So this is when he was completing his master's in criminology earlier this year before he went to Washington. Mm -hmm. So this guy, many are speculating to have been someone who has had a large affinity for serial killers, murderers, and that's why he's in criminology. Mm -hmm. And his fascination with crimes may have led him to there's a lot of speculating. Like, there's even people who think that he may have found someone through reaching out through this research participation stuff to actually do the crimes, and he was just an accomplice to see like how he could push someone to do it. There's all sorts of things flowing around. Many people, it is him. Um, it's it's crazy. Like he was a he was taught by the same professor who wrote the biography on the BTK killer mm -hmm. who was a, a serial killer in Wichita who used to, you know, uh, he's bind, torture, kill, bind, torture, kill. And that's the dude that he got caught because he like couldn't help himself and started like sending more letters to the police and stuff. Yeah. He left a lot of incriminating evidence yeah. on himself and his whole family had no idea. And, uh, actually the daughter of the BTK, BTK killer said, I have ongoing concerns knowing how common it is for criminology students, true crime fans, and others to correspond regularly with my father, that Koberger could have been in contact with my father at some point, but require proof of this, which currently I do not know of. 
My father and his many murders are studied intensively in the field of criminology. I believe strongly in the training of future law enforcement, criminology, and forensic minds and give lectures myself to further educate in these fields. This woman is just, you know, like thinks that this guy who took the, like was currently taking a class with the woman who was a BTK specialist that, you know, he was modeling because the BTK killer, I'm correct, was just totally random. I, yeah, he would like scout people out. Yeah. Uh, but it was it, not people that were in his life for the most part. Yeah. Um, the It sounds like the BTK guy, I mean, he's locked up. He doesn't have a lot of a lot of stuff to do. He probably just answers like all his all his mail. Imagine. If anybody wants to interview him. And there have been a few killers that have been in criminology classes or uh, in the field of like, you know, being a police officer. And they learn what they used in those classes. And they're interested in that specifically to figure out how to get away with committing a crime. So it sounds like this guy was trying to commit like the perfect crime in yeah. his mind. I think in one of the first things they said when they arrested him was, has there been any other arrests made Yeah. in the thing? Which gets even weirder. What I really love is that the Pennsylvania police got a, uh, the exact terminology was, a certain type of warrant that basically allowed them to serve the warrant at any time. And they took the whole SWAT team helicopters and busted him at 2 a.m. with his whole family in there just because that's exactly what he did to the, to the kids and just lit them up in the middle of the night. Hmm. That was... I, if you're a cop and, and you have like the opportunity to just like use all the toys that you get funded with, like get the tank out there too. Get that involved. And take scare, it for a spin. Scare the ever living crap out of this murderer. Yeah, you got to make sure that you get the address right though. <laughs> there have been some some issues. There with was that an in the FBI past. Uh, agent of, of, outside his house for four days before. Okay. Speaking of killing dogs, there was a I think it happened in Virginia a, a few years ago. They like served Virginia, a no knock warrant. Newport Beach. Or is it my Newport News or Virginia? Newport Beach? News. No, no, you're talking about Mike Vick. Yeah. No, there was a, a no knock warrant that got served and they like kicked down the front door and there was like a golden retriever that like came at the cops and they shot the golden retriever dead. That happens a lot. And it was the wrong house that they went into. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're a cop and you shoot a golden retriever, you're you should not be a police officer anymore. Yeah. You're you're a coward. Straight up. Too. Golden retrievers? Probably. I don't know. Yeah, if, if I was a cop and I saw a golden retriever running at me, I'd be like, this is awesome. I have this like, made. Uh, back, uh, back to blue, you know, back to blue. <laughs> I have an irrational fear uh, that like of getting a noise complaint because I don't want that to happen to my dog. Because you're squatting too heavy? Cops show up? <laughs> no, like they, they open the door like there's a, you know, I'm in the backyard and, yeah. like, and they just come through and then my dog go, runs to the door and he's like 100 pounds and he just gets blasted because it's like. Yeah, it's, that's he's like, a scary looking dog. Yeah, you like that's very keeps me keep the noise down. Yeah, it's smart. I I had that <laughs> same fear with Leroy one time. I I actually did have to call the cops one time in Austin because I thought somebody was breaking in my house, and so like I had Leroy in my hand. And as the cops knocked on the door, I was like, "Hey, just a heads up, I've got a very big dog, and he's very friendly. Please don't shoot him." And they're like, "Okay, can you just come outside?" And so I was like, "Yeah," and I just snuck outside. But that is that is a common fear. Like it's your dog does look terrifying if. If you don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. He's a big boy. Uh, so they they broke down this dude's uh, family's house yeah. door, pulled him out in the middle of the night. And, and this was I'm, in Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm thinking that since this guy planned everything out uh, and he you know used his criminology background to plan out the actual murder, he probably has a couple other surprises waiting for us, yeah. right? Like he's probably thought of what to do if you are, if you are caught. He yeah. probably had that like planned out. I think this was part of it. I th this guy's like, I, from everything I've read, everybody says he's really smart, really, but seemed off. Uh, I think you could tell that from looking at him. I think he planned it out to about where he would get away with it for a while, knowing he was eventually going to get caught. And I think he sounds very confident that, like, he's going to get off. I was reading that he waived his extradition trial in yep. Pennsylvania. I think there, I just read there... They're in, on a plane right now taking him back to Idaho. And they said he would only do that if he was pretty confident that, like, 
they're going to take it to trial and win. So, or mm. he wants the buzz because Idaho, they can't reveal anything about why they served the warrant until he's back in Idaho. Uh, but the rumor mill around the town, like this guy has been very well known for one. Oh, he's also a vegan. And this is going to play into the story later because uh, Maddie and Kaylee both worked at a, a restaurant that served a lot of vegan options in the area. And he's a very strict vegan. He even made his parents throw out all the pots and pans that have ever been used cooking with meat. Where'd you see this? Uh, I heard it from somebody. Okay. <laughs> who's very, right. who's very close to the case has been tracking it for a long time. Okay. Um, but basically, uh, he's also known around center Valley. So this is something I found. Jordan Sorolnik, 34, lives in Center Center Valley and is the owner of Seven Sirens Brewing Company. Sorolnik said Koberger came to his brewery a few times and female staff would often complain about his behavior. Sorolnik said the brewery is located in a college town. It's not unusual for them to get unusual characters. But he remembered Koberger from some interactions he had with female patrons and staff. He said Koberger often came by himself, sat at the bar, and was observing and watching. Srulnik said staff scans everyone's IDs and they have a system where they can add notes about a patron that pops up whenever the ID is scanned. Mm. Staff put in there, hey, this guy makes creepy comments, keep an eye on him. He'll have two or three beers and then just get a little too comfortable. Srulnik said Kohlberg would come and ask the female staff or customers who they were at the brewery with, where they lived. He said if the women blew him off, he'd get upset with them a little, a little bit, noting that one time he called one of his staff members a bitch when she refused to answer his questions. These interactions were months ago, Sorolnik said, likely when Koberger was a student at DeSalle, DeSales. During their final interaction, Sorolnik said he approached Koberger. I went up to him and said, hey, Brian, welcome back. We appreciate you coming back. I just wanted to talk to you real quick and make sure that you had to be, you're going to be respectful this time and we're not going to have any issues. He said Koberger was taken aback. He was shocked that I was saying that. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. You totally have me confused. He said Koberger had one beer and left and never came back to the brewery. So... Apparently, he went to class Sunday morning, finished mm -hmm. out the semester after the murders. The murder was November 13th, mm -hmm. I want to say. And then that Monday, he was at class. And apparently, his classmates in criminology, he went to class Monday and seemed very jovial. He was a TA and tended to talk over his female teacher. Big incel vibes. Actually, these are my notes. I just wrote that down. That's not from the article. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whenever murders were spoken about in class, he... When the murders, okay, this, these are my notes. That's not from the article. Uh, so he went to class very Monday. He seemed jovial. He was laughing. He was very. Do you have like a separate? Do you have like something that 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 separates your notes and in, in the article? Yeah, basically, I accidentally wrote these <laughs> notes in under the article font. Uh, but he would talk over teachers, and he did. I mean, we can all tell he has big incel vibes. Just whenever it's women hilarious. are not giving attention yeah. and murdering I, three women. Yeah, I warned us and a, a assumed sex haver. An assumed boy who has sex with girl. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I told you guys, incels, they're fucking dangerous. You didn't have to, like, you're acting like we didn't believe you. We I know. know. I know. Uh, Billy, you totally opened my eyes about yeah. weirdos, man. Dude, Thank you. Um, but he was very talkative, but whenever the murders would come up in class, he would go deadpan apparently from classmates. Uh, That's not what I, I, well, I don't know about his in classes class. that he was in, but the classes he taught, I heard one that he talked about the murders in his classes and two, cause the P as a PhD student, he was teaching like undergrad classes and that two, he was a notoriously difficult grader that every paper kids turned in, there'd be a hundred marks on them and he graded really tough. And then after the murders, he started give, just giving everyone A's and everything. No, but nothing had any notes on it. And that everything was graded really easily. Because he was probably busy yeah, I don't doing know. other stuff and not, not so nitpicking. The craziest part is that he his father flew out to Washington to drive back to Pennsylvania with him. And I have a feeling from... So, and then he was pulled over twice in Indiana. And basically, during that drive and during in subsequent days since he did everything he could to make sure not to leave any fingerprints or dna anywhere by wearing gloves in the grocery store masks not throwing out any trash apparently from sources who were close to law enforcement who were surveilling him 
and would take all these precautions. So there's actually dash cam footage that I'm going to send you guys of him getting pulled over in Indiana the second time. First time he was pulled over for speeding. Second time he was pulled over for, uh, uh, what's it called? Sorry. Uh, bumper. Just like riding too close to the guy in front of him. Tailgating. Tailgating. Um, so the police officer pulled up on him and there's actually a screenshot of him just looking terrified. Yeah, I think he definitely planned this out really well. Um, I mean, it just goes to the fact of how long it took for them to actually like get his DNA and, and track him down. So I feel like, I mean, I think he probably watched these girls for weeks, maybe months and and track them down and, and had this all planned out. He for got a while. pulled over a mile from their house in August, I think. Huh. Now he Washington State, Pullman, Washington, I think is only about fifteen minutes mm-hmm. yeah. from where that was. So I guess not entirely crazy that he would have been a mile away from there, but given what happened now, seems like And and that food truck surveillance that was circulating a lot. In the background, you can see a white car do like almost a K-turn. Um, you can't really tell if that's the exact car, but you do see a white car drive past, back up, and then turn around and come the other way that night around the food truck. Mm-hmm. So he could have yeah. been following them the entire night. And then speculation says that uh, the two girls who worked at a, a restaurant that had a lot of vegan options, and as this guy was so strictly vegan, he might have gone there and given them the type of treatment that the brewery owner was talking about if he repeatedly went there because he was only a vegan i mean and that also explains why the dog was untouched and the dog also it was skinned no no the first dog the dog in the apartment apartment. or the house yeah okay Uh, one of the girls had a dog gotcha gotcha yeah and the dog was you know, this was one of the things where they got angry at the Moscow police. Like, why was the dog taken directly to a uh, a facility? Because maybe they didn't want the dog ruining the crime scene. Yeah. But. That makes sense. Uh, also, also, I think I've identified Billy's source. It was the New York Post that said that he was an obsessive vegan that made his family wash pots and pans. So, mystery solved. Ah. Uh, I mean, that's not what's wrong with the New York Post. Nothing. Bill, they break Bill, a lot of stories that other outlets won't even let you true. report on. That's true. You can't probably can't talk about the story on Twitter. Yeah. But uh, no, Billy had said that it was. Uh, oh, it, a, that it was a secret, a source. secret source that he had talked to. Extensively. <laughs> and it's weird because the person that they reference in this article in the New York Post claims to be his the, the murderer's former aunt, which I don't really understand that nomenclature. So an uncle who married. A woman who they then divor- divorced? Ex-aunt? Yeah. Ex- I don't think I've ever heard that before. No, I've never heard that. I mean, she probably is trying to distance the hell away from this person. Yeah. But like if, you're, if your uncle gets a divorce and the aunt is like long gone, like doesn't want anything to do with her nephew. It's just a very a sad. Weirdo. It's a very sad thing to say like my ex-aunt. Yeah. Or ex-aunt. I'm his ex-aunt. He's guys, my ex-nephew. Do you guys say ex-aunt or ex-aunt? Aunt. 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 I say aunt. aunt too. Um... But yeah, this dude, uh, also his high sc- people who went to high school and described him as he used to be very fat. Uh, mm-hmm. And then he started doing drugs. Uh, and then people started dissing themselves from him because like his one of his last friends said that he was texting his girlfriend weird stuff and asking her to come over and drink wine with him mm-hmm. to split a bottle. Anyone, anyone who's asking to split a bottle with someone like of the opposite gender, like that's... That's like, quote, like, that's even worse than Netflix and chill. Splitting a bottle of wine? Yeah. Pretty, Do you want to come up and norm- split a bottle? Pretty normal. Pretty, pretty normal for people that date, Billy. Yeah. Right. But if you don't date, if you're like talking to your friend's girlfriend, would, would you I, ever ask- Was tell- his friend's girlfriend or his ex? His friend's girlfriend. Oh. I yeah, imagine I mean, that's, someone that's, texted- that's, that's, just, that's just being a fucking- Creep, like that's just like you, yeah. you, you, you disloyal as fuck. But if that was to go down, I mean, that's a pretty normal thing to request. I'd like, say, it's, come. yeah, yeah. I'd say it's a no, pretty smooth like, line if you if you're like a, trying to get with somebody oh, and you're like, oh, hey, I mean, you want to split a bottle? I'm of wine? saying that's like basically. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go say that's that's actually kind of. I might take that. I mean, everything else you did is fucking insane. Yeah. That 
it's pretty <laughs> like, uh, with a bottle of wine. That's I, actually kind of yes. It's not like you want to have a glass. It's like more, do you want to share in this moment with me? That's yeah. not bad, actually. It's yeah. like, hey, I, I know, but I got this bottle of Arbor Mist with our name on it, baby. Uh, nice. Dude. <laughs> okay, so it's just something you shouldn't say to your friend's girlfriend. Correct. So well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This guy then, after high school, got into like boxing. Apparently, he was very like, huh. always trying to fight right, people. Here, here's, 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 here's a question. Here's a question. Here's a question. All right. This is for the group. Your homeboy has your homeboy's girl they're very open sexually they got a she has a only fans and you want to support do you support no yeah i don't think i could. i don't think i could do can't that. do it can't do it no i don't think you can yeah <laughs> I, agree. Why, no, I agree why do you ask <laughs> Aaron? <laughs> I got a friend that's going through this. You yeah, predict. You're in a predicament. What's, what is what's, your, what's his friend's name? Philip. Yeah, Philip. How's uh? What was Philip rated in Madden? <laughs> <laughs> I think that kind of part. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like they, like they got like a open relationship, basically. Okay. But I, I'm not, I would never do it. I'm just saying, like, no. I, I would love to. I, I mean, I, y'all know how I feel about OnlyFans anyway. Like, I'm not, I, I get free porn sites. I'm not going to pay you to get me horny. But it's a wild, it's a wild uh, thing I, that, that had crossed my mind of like, if somebody was to be in that position, what would they do? So I was just saying, what kind of, what kind of, what would y'all do? I would probably say no. That'd be weird. Right. Well, it also, yeah. it's like, how, how long have they been dating? That sort of situation. Yeah, I mean, how close are you to to both of them? I think there's a lot of a lot of, a lot of variables. Yeah, there's variables in there. Yeah. Um. So so Billy, he became a boxer after high school. What else? And he was always trying to fight people and use his boxing skills. Okay. That's and that's illegal. The, yeah, you can be put in jail for uh, assault with deadly weapon. Yeah. Yeah. If if you're registered, but if your registration expires, it's a little bit of a gray area, but. It's weird, um, but so if you look at the the da- the officer body cam footage, you do see his hands are kind of messed up, which is kind of weird because if it occurred so many months ago, it probably would have healed mm-hmm. from November. But you can kind of see it in some of his arrest photos too that he has messed up hands, um, because like if you're stabbing that many people probably gonna accidentally cut yourself yeah well it, yeah, so the, had, uh, the type I'm of sorry, knife i was just gonna say the type of knife that he used um most people so it, most murders uh are if you have like a big knife that just has the handle and the blade and there's multiple stab wounds on it then you look for a person that has very damaged hands and fingers because as you're stabbing your hand slips and gets cut by the blade apparently this knife had a hilt on it so it had the handle and then um like a blocking part that separated it from the blade itself is a k-bar yeah is that yep. what it's called the yeah. k-bar and so when you stab with it your hand doesn't slide up onto the blade it's meant for killing people yes basically it's it's used in like the military yep yeah and so that's what he had um so he was able to like get away with not having his I think he planned this out like pretty extensively, and and I, you you were talking about um well no the, there was that movie Law Abiding Citizen you remember that movie fantastic movie that's another great one where the person had like a bunch of shit planned out for after he got arrested I'm not saying that Koberger has like that type of thing planned out but he's a criminology major almost a doctorate he was very clearly trying to commit like the perfect crime yeah he he has something planned for after he gets arrested whether that means that. He's going to like represent himself in court and right. then use that as a platform to get whatever he wants to get off Def- his chest out. Definitely has a God complex. He might. Yeah. But it, I'm just saying like, this is probably not the end for his plan right now. They think, I mean, criminologists and speculators like think that the girl's rooms were locked downstairs, but there's a certain element to killers who have a God complex. And they're like, he let the women downstairs live. Or he didn't know what was going on down there. Yeah. He might have not even known it existed. Yeah. Well, it makes it that leaves logical suspects. True. If you don't kill everyone in the house. Yeah, that might have been part of the equation. I'm, I I would have to. This like, is, like a murderer, Big T. I like it. 
Well, what's well, that, scary? I mean, that's fairly common sense. What's, a murderer. what's scary is he had that the research article that he reached out to people yeah. and asked for them to basically tell them if they had ever committed a murder, this and that. And then he goes to the thing the other day and he's like, did they get anybody else? There's also yeah. so it makes you almost think that there could be other people involved. There's also rumors like there's TikToks and a guy on a true crime podcast who claims that he may have even called in and said because mm-hmm. there's like a TikTok where some guys like going, "This is a crime scene. There was blood. There wasn't blood there. The blood was here. The blood was there." And then like when it shut, when the screen shuts off, the reflection looks like a guy who looks like Koberger. I saw that. Yeah, it's like a guy basically explaining the murder, but very specifically of like basically that, facts that you just wouldn't know unless you were a part of it. That wasn't him. I saw a I saw a thing that went into that and the guy found the YouTube channel that th- that has been it was the same username and it had stuff from years ago and it was a guy that's not him. See, isn't that crazy how convincing yeah. it is? Like I almost like mm-hmm. felt like it was so real, but TikTok is just crazy how they just But and did you... y'all see the video of the guy walking into the vigil at Idaho? Yes, I did that see that. It looks like him. No. no. It's it's like one wide shot camera. It's in their football facility. Uh not their uh their stadium. They have a dome. And it's there's a guy that walks into the frame walking very awkwardly tall skinny guy and you can only see like the side of him but it looks pretty like the guy the the police were definitely thinking that the murderer was going to show up at that vigil Mm -hmm. because it it fits the the pattern and the mo and there have been some cases where somebody's given like quotes they they get involved in like the investigation or they seem like they're around the news a little bit too much and that they're in the spotlight and that's that's also something that they look for so he it wouldn't shock me at all if he did go to the vigil yeah let me find that video do you have any idea do we know anything about why his dad flew out yeah uh apparently to help it was planned before i think the the family released a statement and i think that they're kind from the statement it sounded like uh, oh yeah brian laundry-esque no no more like yeah we kind of know he did it yeah. Like in his, cause his sisters, like, I think, I, I don't want to like, you know, innocent people, sisters who like, they posted about like Uvalde, like mass shootings. Like they seem like a very normal, s- normal family with maybe like an oddball son. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, you could tell that in the, in the Indiana, like the father seemed kind of slow and unassuming. Yeah. Like, oh, we just got pulled over. So, like very, like, almost not senile but just old like not capable of being complicit in murder yeah also if your son asks you to like drive across the country you're probably going to do it or like i want to spend time with you son i haven't like i'll fly out and Mm -hmm. like drive with you you've been so wrapped up in your studies yeah yeah so this guy it sounds like he he planned it all out i i think it'd be a good experiment for a different episode for us to plan out a bank robbery Mm -hmm. on on the air (sighs) I think that would be a good idea. I what? just honestly, could we is is can, can are we allowed to rob your bank? Just any bank out there. Just let us do a simulated robbing. Yeah. We like we'll set it up like we'll have actors pretending to be customers and just like let us see if we can like rob your bank. Well, the, I think the hard part is getting away with robbing the bank. Well, I don't even want to do the getaway part. Just like the go in rob the bank. I think I could. Wait, 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 wait. I think there's. I'm curious. When you mean rob the bank, do you just mean take the money, but they know that they're going to get it back? Yes. But what's the point of that? We get all dressed up. We run in and say, everybody get on the floor. <laughs> but they're, but the, money, but they're actors. But hold on. But they're actors too? Uh, just the customers. You, you can. I, I bet you're. So your idea you is wanna, to terrorize. You want to traumatize. You want to traumatize the no, workers the who workers, are already underpaid. Let the workers know. Bank or bank. So, so you just want to cosplay a, a robbery? You, I think Billy, that's all what we wanted to do, right? I I, I don't want to do that. I want to. I just want to figure out the way to get away with the bank robbery. PFT wants to. Im- you need a vault ima- guy. Imagine how we could get away with. A robbery, not yeah. commit robbery. Because I think I think we could play. It's impossible to get. I I still stand by the fact that it's pretty much impossible to get away with murder mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, I think this guy was literally trying. Like, yeah, I think so was, too. I think 
in all of his classes, probably they're saying like it's impossible to get away with murder. There's too much stuff. There's every every app that you have on your phone tracks or sends back to a server that can identify your location. Cell yeah. phone towers. We got cameras on every road at every toll booth. Cameras at every store. Digital footprint. Digital footprint. There's just it's it's pretty much. I think it's impossible. You would away. have to have never used any piece of technology ever. Kill someone that you've never met. Yeah. and still be like a very smart criminal. I think that the only way that you could do it is what sounds like what this guy was trying to do is a complete stranger. Yeah, yeah. random. If this is him, this guy has the goofiest walk of all time. There's video of his hey, lab, That looks By the weird, way, look right? Look at the it side profile so and say I look nothing like this guy, please, because that was a little offensive. Oh, yeah, Big T claimed that Billy looked like him a little you bit. You don't look nothing like him. I look yeah. nothing like nah. this guy. You look something like something. him. Something from the side. No, not different. from the side. The side is actually, you look more from the side than yeah. straight on. Are you kidding me? Billy, no one's saying that you're a murderer. We're just yeah. stating just like, a fact. I know, but this guy looks like Dennis from mm. Always Sunny, which actually Man. I feel bad for. What's uh, the cosplay of uh, uh, Robbery? I think he might be a murderer. I do feel bad for Glenn Howerton, who played this like psychopath character, and now a guy who looks exactly like him kind of did this. You know who you look like, Big T? Uh oh. Oh yeah. boy. Wait, no, there's actually a Big T doppelganger. I don't know if you guys saw, you guys got tagged in that video, the oh, guy that dancing. Guy, that guy didn't look like me. Yes, he did. PFT, did you see this? I don't know. <laughs> Which guy dancing? I'll, I'll I see. mean, y'all are going to say he did just because, like, we're doing this now, but that guy doesn't. I don't think Big T, no offense, Big T, you don't strike me as somebody that could, like, cut a rug. I think you're more of a, like, step clap. Like, you can step and clap on time. But you don't I don't think you don't think I could cut a rug. I don't think you have any moves. Okay, I mean, do doubt, you have moves? Bobby Doub Hill, doubt at your own peril. <laughs> do you have moves? I don't know. I think that you you fall into your pattern and and you just own that pattern. You don't try to do too much. I'm not saying you're a bad that's, dancer. That's fair. I'm saying that you're a good. I'm, I'm, you know your role. I'm gonna, say he's, I'm gonna say he's a bad dancer. I'm gonna say you don't got a rhythm. You look like Richard Kuklinski. Uh, I don't think that he's a bad dancer or a bad rhythm person at all because remember when he did your rap song yeah that was offbeat a little bit it was cool that he got the words right though i think he's it's got the first right. time i'd ever heard the song i'm not mad what are you mad at me i'm just odds aren't in your favor i would love to see you dance and i'll be your biggest fan if you're a good dancer big t maybe. i just don't think you can dance just off rip maybe. off you know you don't pass the eye test maybe we'll, but, go, we'll go out in a few weeks we'll see let's let's get it oh, let's get fancy big let's, t let's, let's have a it. dance off at the live show Oh, I don't I'm, dance, I man. I'll dance. Over for that. No, I, 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 I boogie. I got go I got to do it. I got rhythm. I could boogie, but I'm not a dancer, bro. My mom says I'm a great dancer, but I don't know if that's. I got I got <laughs> boys. I got some homies that can dance. They ass. I'm talking about like dance. Oh, I tell you, they can dance. Like I used to be jealous. Like you go to the clubs, and, like these dudes get behind females, and they got moves. They could just. Do the damn thing. I from can, behind? I can do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of I girls like From that. behind, in the front. <laughs> what, like, bro, they could like literally like- Wait, just, wait, like, I'm just saying. different. How do how do the females appreciate the dancing if they're facing forward? Oh, come on, okay. guys. Have you never danced with a woman before? You, okay, I don't want to explain it to Billy. <laughs> Billy gets never danced with a woman. No, I have. I don't think you- My mom, my mom really thinks I'm a that. great dancer. She says, but may, I don't know if that's like a, a dancing only that's, your mother could love. That's absolutely, abs absolutely what it is because of what you just described to me. No, I'm have kidding. you ever, have you ever, have you ever danced? With I just realized dance series dancing. Now? I think you just told me. You're talking about no. When you're talking about dancing, like my friends are great dancers. I forgot. Like I, I was more thinking of break dancing, and then I was like, oh, black? dancing with them, as opposed to like dancing at. Do you dance at a woman? No, like <laughs> dancing with a woman in a different capacity. Yeah, you think okay. black people can only break dance? No, can't dance no, like <laughs> like solo dancing because we were talking about a dance off, originally. Whatever. I'm so confused. Anyways, boy back. just talked himself into a hole. I. <laughs> but hold on, have you ever danced with a woman? Yes, or I know how to foxtrot. I know how to. <laughs> what year is this? I know how to salsa a little. I know how to like swing dance. Merengue. You salsa? I, I can do a little salsa. Have you salsa though? Give me a taste. I, it wasn't the best. Give me a little salsa. Oh, I, I may have done a little bit of like a dance class once. Did you do like cotillion? No, no. I was gonna say that's what a lot of kids learn from. 
the the trick to salsa dancing, as far as I know, is you had yeah do like hands yeah do this with your hands with yeah and the hips go at the no, same the time. Hips, it's definitely hips. I, I took a salsa class once. I took a. It was actually a really. It was like one of those after school activities that your parents sign you up for when you're younger, like in between sports. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember any of that. And you can like take a couple of those. Oh, stupid! You, Billy. you just copy. <laughs> oh, oh, you got this shoulder movement. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, and then you got to then you got to swing the girls. <laughs> oh, shake them a little bit. You could be on Dancing with the Stars. Are you famous enough to be on Dancing with the Stars? No. Are you sure? No. Do yeah. You, it's I rich mean, enough. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm rich <laughs> enough. I'm rich enough. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you're definitely famous enough to be on Dancing with the Stars. They've had less famous people than you. No, are because yeah. the, I the audience for Dancing with the Stars is like six year old women, right? Athletes. Ex ex athletes. Arian, would Have you, you ever on? think about doing it? I, th- I don't dance. I told you, I'm not a. Like, that's like I have rhythms, so they teach you. I'm gonna dance. look through the I'm cast straight. and see I if they've P. had someone less famous than PFT. <laughs> okay. Absolutely, they have. Absolutely, they have. Mm-hmm. In terms of no doubt, wh- knowing yes, like there have been less. Maybe less the first known. person on here. I've never heard of this person. Who is it? Trista yeah. Suter. No idea. Damn. Damn. An no, American television personality, physical therapist, and dancer who was the runner-up on season one of The Bachelor. Oh, she was go. the first ever bachelorette. Oh, okay. Okay, that's All from right. a long time yeah. ago. You gotta but, go. But still, that's a, that hits their target audience, yeah. right? Yeah, you may not be in their target demographic, but Arian, ex-NFL player who says he doesn't dance and wants to find... It's like a Hallmark movie. He finds the his love of dance mm-hmm. and and falls in love with and falls in love with rhythm. That's <laughs> that's the point of Dancing with the Stars. And then you, you and your partner probably... Uh, Petra or whoever have like amazing chemistry and they're like, are they dating? Like it's a whole thing. Oh, uh-huh. this person's less famous you than just, you. That, what, a, what a story. I love it, Maddie. I might, I, might, I might check to see what's going on. Man. I love Dancing yeah. with the Stars. Giselle Fernandez is an American television journalist and anchor for Spectrum News One. Isn't that just a local station in New York? I, I, I no, think... Spectrum News One is everyone who has Spectrum. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Giselle Fernandez? Yeah. I think you're more famous than her. I think I might be. You man, there's been plenty. You're, you guys are like Drew Lachey. There's a second Lachey. Oh, I'm yeah. way more famous than Nick Lachey's brother. There's a. I didn't know there was a second Lachey. No, he was in 98 <laughs> Degrees too. Yeah, he was. If this was, if this is 1997, he's like, yes, the dude was. He was at the top of his game. On fire. But right now, yeah, Drew Lachey, my Q score is way above his. Okay, yeah, no, you, you're more famous than several of these people. But but he gets the runoff from being Nick Lachey's brother on that show. Right. Also, So people kind of recognize Also, him. women enjoyed 98 Degrees. And women don't enjoy... I'm a woman that part enjoys, of my enjoys part of my take. I was okay. listening to it this morning. Willa Ford, have y'all heard of her? Yes. I've, yes. I actually... actually. You should know exactly who Drew Lachey is. He's from He's from Ohio. Yes, they are. Oh wait, something about the also, case might get. He might arrive in Idaho soon. Yeah, and might be able yeah to they're release. on the they're on the plane right now. I saw a tweet about it. It stopped in Illinois to refuel or something. Shit, we. What if he gets broken out? What if he's like El Chapo? What What if we like do an update? Like we're gonna air this and like a huge thing broke. Right. I don't think anything massive is going. No, because if he happen. once he gets in Idaho, they'll release the arrest warrant and what to have on him for probable cause. How do you How do you know where his plane is? Somebody was tracking it. You can track any plane you want. It's uh, registered not on to the, the. This person <laughs> was doing it. It's it was registered to on the Twitter. Pennsylvania Department of that's, the that's, State that's, Police. That's, or something. that's that's doxing according to Daddy Elon. Don't yeah. be don't be don't be following people's plans on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Um Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's gonna be anything massive that comes out. I do like the idea that we still have these old laws in the United States where uh it, we can't say anything about the man until he gets back inside the borders of Idaho. It seems like very wild west, doesn't it? Yeah. I kinda like that. I've been watching eighteen eighty three and it's pretty sick. Do you watch also Yellowstone? Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yellowstone is like uh, Sopranos with mountains. Yes. I like Damn, I had an audition I did not take seriously. Never. For Yellowstone? What? Yeah, I had an audition for Yellowstone. What? What? Which character? I was like, hello. Uh, I have no idea. And that was years ago. But I had a, um, 
I had an audition and I didn't want to do it. My man was like, yo, Kevin Costner's going to be in it. You guys had good energy with uh, draft day. And I was like, all right, whatever. I didn't really, I didn't even read the script till going to the audition. I was just, I didn't take it seriously. I didn't know what it was. That would have been cool if I took it seriously. What? I got that bitch. Yeah. What, what was your role? Do you remember like I don't know. the lines? I, I've never seen that. No, I've never even seen the show. So you were probably going to be one of the cowboys. You were probably going to be yeah, one, one of the guys yeah, that, that I, lives I, in the bunkhouse. I think, I think I was a cowboy. I, I can remember that. I think I was. Yeah. Because would have been crazy. There is, um, there, there is an African-American cowboy that lives in the bunkhouse. And now he's like kind of dating slash sleeping with one of the cowgirls that's in there. Um, and he's got he's got like a beard like you do. They probably wanted you to be. Yep. Yeah, man, sliding doors moment. That would have definitely gotten say, you on Dancing with the Stars. That's the life goal, man. You just yeah. dance with the stars. Try again on 1923. What's that? The I new don't know one. what that. I, I don't. I don't. I haven't. I, I've like my agent for that shit just doesn't send me scripts anymore because I just stopped doing them. I just fell out of love with it. Can, can you he, can you look at your text message history with that agent and see what else? See, find the script. <laughs> I don't know if I do because I got a new phone that didn't carry everything. I, I need you to find the script because I want to find out what role you are auditioning for. Like, what if you were going to be like Kevin Costner's like son-in-law or something? What if he was going to be Kevin Costner? What if you're going to be Rip? Yeah. yeah what if you're going to be Kevin Costner? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't have her. I don't have her. I don't have her thread. It's gone. <laughs> Who's Rip? Yeah. Is that Kevin Costner? No, Rip Rip's is, the, is the... Cole Hauser. He's the the big guy that like is in charge black of hat. all the cowboys. He's the black hat. I don't watch it. My parents are obsessed with it. He's in charge of all the cowboys. He's I a just, classic black hat in the Western. Mm, he, I just think Kevin Costner is very handsome. He keeps shit in line around around the Yellowstone Ranch. Mm. Yeah. He, he you know, knows where the bodies are buried. Got it. Yes, literally. Actually. <laughs> in a county with zero population. Anyways. Um, any, anywho. Uh, I don't think anything is gonna break like by the time this comes out tonight. No, it might. No. He's supposed to be here th there today. It's actually really bad planning on our part. It'll be fine. We're working with. I. You know what I'll do? You'll do an extra dose on. I'll this? I'll do a an extra dose. Hopefully it breaks. If it breaks in a time where Avery hasn't caught up the podcast, I'll give a little update. Hey, a, Avery, are you is okay that a shot with at me? No, no, like if you're totally done with the podcast, I'm not going to be like, add this in. Oh, no, no, I know. By the, um, by the way, everybody clap it up. Avery's birthday. Oh, yeah. Oh, happy yeah. birthday, oh, Avery. Thanks, guys. We all said it before we started recording. Happy Thank birthday, you. Avery. I can't. Yeah, you're working on your birthday. Hardest working working man in show business. What? 25? 25. Wow. Quarter life crisis. Big two five. You're assuming that you'll be 100. Yeah, I would hope so. Well, not not hope so. I would, I forget what age I said I would want to live to. We talked about that on the last episode. Look, look at the screen. Look, look at the screen. Check yep. me out. Check me out. You ready? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Little birthday cakes. No, I, hey. I think if I live to like eighty-five, I'll be happy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a good. That's a good age. Number. Yep. You got anything big planned today? You can rent a car now, and you can rent a house. I can. I think you can't. You could probably rent a car before you turn twenty-five, but you have to pay, pay extra. like extra insurance. Now yeah. it's like. In the eyes of insurance adjusters, you are an adult now. You can't rent a house? Like a beach house. But you can rent an apartment? No, I'm not talking about like- Oh, a, like short-term rental? If you do like a short-term rental, yeah. Oh, okay. When does the age stop where you don't start getting like things like that? This is your last one. Is this it? No, this next is, next one's last one. Next one, I have to go on insur my own insurance. Oh, yeah, oh, but that's a bad shit. thing. That is a bad thing. And then at that point, it's like nothing is cool until you turn, what is it, 60? And you get Medicaid. Medicaid. And that's when you get Medicaid? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I yeah. need to start getting some more surgeries. Because I just realized- I think I'm going to get LASIK. Like I actually asked for LASIK for my birthday. I don't really like gifts. I just- But like, I, I'm sick of contacts. I'm done. Yeah. You should yeah. You should do it. I heard it's unbelievable. Change your life. I need to get my nose done. Because <laughs> then I stop sounding nasally. Like, I can't breathe through my nose right now. I yeah. think it hurts my pronunciation. I do need to get my nose done, too. Do you from, want to go do from when it got broken? I'd love to get one. Yeah. yeah, my my shit got my shit got fucked up. My junior year in college, need them to break it back into place. Can you breathe? Uh, it's getting more difficult at night sometimes. I've been I got these new uh, nose pieces that I just shove up there, and it works decently. But in the middle of the night, like 
I think while I'm sleeping, I rip it out because I always wake up and I have this yeah. like, nose piece imprint on my skin. I do need, I just need to get it put back into place. I feel like it's getting more out of place the older that I get. That's what they say about your body. What, <laughs> Arian, Arian oh, is, <laughs> he's dropping no, nose emojis in the chat. Arian knows. They say, they say that about you, like uh, whatever bigger features you have, as you get older, they get even bigger and more pronounced. Yep, they grow. Yeah, my grandpa, uh, R.I.P. Grandpa Max. Man, we used to make fun of his ears because that boy ears used to just drop. He just got bigger. Everything starts sagging. Yeah. So I gotta, I gotta get this shit fixed before I get any older. Big ears. Yeah. Um, okay. So we got anything else about this, Billy? That you want to get into? Um. I it's going to be a long trial, man. Like yeah. it's going to be like if they're going for the death penalty, I mean this could this case could be 3 to 5 years. Also, Oh, they have the they have a death penalty, I know. Mhm. Mm yeah. Damn. If it's capital punishment, yeah. No no longer horse thievery. That's that was on the book. I was actually looking up the, like that was on the books pretty recent there. What when, if you steal a horse, you can get killed? Yeah. What do you guys feel about that? I feel like I would just want them to rot in prison. Like, I feel like the death penalty is like too quick and easy of a death for a sicko like that. Yeah. there's a Also because he would have exposure to criminologists and people to study him. Yeah. There's there's a couple reasons why I don't agree with the death penalty. One is because um, if you kill an innocent person, that's fucked up and it makes everybody murderers because we pay taxes that go towards killing that. Right. Uh, and we have killed innocent people like that's just a fact there have been innocent people that get executed and that's like the worst thing imaginable is somebody that had nothing to do with it gets killed by the state um two it's not a deterrent so it's been studied um and there's absolutely no reason to have it on to, to there's no reason why you would think that it deters people from killing murder or from committing murder because if you're going to commit a murder you're going to do it uh you've reached that point in your mind where you're not going to like weigh the consequences of it it's like you want to kill this person, so you're going to kill him. I feel you like it makes them more inclined more. to do it if there's death because penalty. they know they're just going to. They're it's an easy out. Like yeah. they don't have to rot in prison. It could be, um, and I I think that if you just look across how it's enforced, too, the death penalty is enforced uh, at a much greater percentage on people who get convicted of murder who don't have money, as opposed to people who get convicted of murder that have money. So it's essentially saying like if you. If you're able to afford this great big lawyer, then you're not going to be punished to the same extent as anybody else. It's not equitable enforcement. Um, it's not. It's actually been studied uh, to not be, to not be a deterrent whatsoever. Like police chiefs across the country say that it's not a deterrent, um, and also it's just not up to the government. I think to kill somebody. Right. Oh, did did you see the? Uh Van, tell us, take a moment and appreciate his explanation for that it was beautiful, PLT. I mean, just, I, it's something that I've thought about a long time. And, and obviously, if like somebody, if somebody murdered somebody close to me, I would want that person to die for sure. Like if you're, I understand that instinct where it's like, you need to kill them. I, I want this person to die, get them off the face of the earth. I completely understand that. So if it was like, if something happened to a family member or a friend of mine, I would 100% understand like why somebody would want the murderer to be punished in the worst way possible. But I think if you zoom out and you look at the entire perspective of it, it's not always, it, it doesn't lend itself to being a good solution as far as the government goes for being able to kill people. Yeah. That's I, th I think the main, I thought I, th I agree with you a thousand percent on that. I think the main pr purposes that you listed were the one that you missed was it's more expensive than just keeping them in jail for life Two, it is, uh, the, the fact that that there can be an innocent person murdered by the hands of the state and there has been innocent people murdered by the hands of the state is fucking ridiculous it's just it's it's we, there's no and, and it doesn't make any logical sense like you kill somebody to prove that killing somebody is wrong this doesn't make any sense there's, there's not i haven't heard a, a valid argument for it yet but uh, but the revenge factor like four families is something i can't speak on right them wanting them dead i understand that emotion you know what I'm saying? And I will never argue with that emotion. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying that the other perspective that you laid out, logically, it makes more sense to not. But other than that, I haven't, I haven't even heard a valid argument for it. Yeah. So, and obviously, like, I, I think the vast majority of people that are put to death are guilty of the crimes that they've done. That's not my argument. My argument is that, like, 
if you kill an innocent person, um, that's the worst thing that you can possibly do as, as like, if you look at our judicial system and at our government, it's like you put an innocent person in jail for something that they didn't do and they have to die now because of your missteps. That's fucked up and that makes everybody murderers. So by that logic, by that logic, mm -hmm. what's your opinion on state sponsored uh, assisted suicide? Uh, I think it's up to the individual. What do you mean state sponsored? I'm not, I don't, I'm not in favor of like the government coming to your door and killing you. I think that if you make a choice that you want to do it personally and it's between you and your doctor, you should be allowed to do it. What do you think about uh, Canadian, their Medicare system uh, suggesting assisted suicide to people who are having un, uh, That's by their not, standard, mm -hmm. uncurable? I don't. I don't think that it's government murder. It's not, I, I think it's. It, it's so, not suggested. Also, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not suggested. Like that is the absolute last resort. Like nobody says, you know what? We're kind of out of options. Kill yourself. It's never like that. Dog. that it's, there, it's a very long, arduous process. Complaints. No, I think what is. Of really, course, there's complaints. Of course, I, I think like, what it is is like the Canadian healthcare system is run by the government. So they're saying like, if you have terminal cancer, one of the options that you have is you can uh, commit, uh, you can do physician assisted suicide and that cost will be borne by the government because it's a healthcare option. And sometimes so, that's just, that's just not providing things like, you know, breathing apparatus, like pulling the plug basically, where, where people, families make that decision on the daily. Families make that decision on the daily in this country. I was like, shoot, can we afford to keep them alive at long enough? Or, you know, all those, all, like healthcare is a very complicated to talk about, but to chalk it up as the government says, that, we're, we're, we're going to sponsor your suicide. It's just not, it's just not a, I've heard that shit before. And it's just not a, um, it's not a genuine argument for that position. It's, it's not a genuine. I don't argument. think the government shows up at your door and they're like, they, okay, here's, here's a guy from the army. That's going to kill you. No, no, that's not what I'm saying. So a 52 year old retired corporal who completed in the 2016 Paralympics at Rio de Janeiro testified to lawmakers that a VA physician, a VA official had offered in writing to provide her with medically assisted suicide. The case officer remains unnamed, reportedly made similar offers to at least three other veterans, according to the independent. Okay. Where is this? Canada. Okay. So it sounds that, that, even, even, even that, if they, not that forcing. could be a, a one-off, right? That could be a one-off, but there it's not, it's not enforced by the state, which is right. the topic is, it's not, it's not that that's, 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 do you not think that's ethical? Do you think that's ethical to try to to push people to ending their own lives instead of trying to find a solution? I, I think that uh, in cases of terminal cancer and where somebody's at the end of their life, giving somebody an option if they want to do that, I think that's like one of the more compassionate things that you can do. Right. But in these instances, I don't I don't know anything about the specifics of this person or are the people that they were talking to or what the offer looked like. Yeah, it's a very it's an anecdotal thing. Now, if, which I'd have if to look that more person, into. if that person was like, "Hey, I'm I'm the head of the VA, and uh, everybody that I've talked to just kills himself if they're dealing with this, and here's a number that you can call, and we'll take care of the rest." That seems like it's bad and off the books, and it seems like very shady. But I do think that if you reach a point in life where you're you're in constant debilitating pain, and you want to end your own life, I think that's a very that's the most personal decision that you can make. And the government should not have a right to interfere with that. That's what I. That's what I think. So it's like I'm not making an argument based on the sanctity of life. That I'm not doing the sanctity of life, uh, anti death penalty argument. I'm saying that the state should not be involved in killing people because it's not going to be a hundred percent. It's not going to be effective. Number one and two, it's not going to be a hundred percent accurate. They're not going to just kill innocent people. Whereas if you're making a personal decision letting the state allow you to make that decision for end of life treatment for yourself. I think that's, that's, uh, it's an individual yeah. choice. I, I think, I don't know. I just sort of relate those two arguments because a lot of suicidal people, even by situational depression end up, if they attempt and then come back out, like there's a large percentage that like say that the current state of mind they were in at that moment, was very short-sighted and they wish they never made that decision to attempt that's for a, a suicidal person um that is 
not at like their end of life. Right, right. That's a completely but, different discussion. But now, this it, was in instances in instances of non end of life. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. So there's oh, okay. several ones from the VA, like VA. So in this one person, not one person, several the people. three people that were talking to this one person is what I'm saying. They were not terminal patients. They were just like depressed, and the person's like, "Here's how you kill yourself." Depressed drug addicts, uh, homeless people. It's a whole. Like it's it's pretty scary when you read into what's going on. Well, no, I'm trying to figure out what's going on, and you've said that there was one person that was accused of this. Let me pull up the on exact. on three that and this person's fucked up if that's what the case is. I'm telling you, like, if it was a drug addict and then like a depressed person, and the the individual at the VA in Canada was like, here, here's how you kill yourself. Of course, that's a terrible thing. And that uh, person, I, think you, I don't think you. I don't think you look at it like that. You look at it like as, from a systematic point of view. Like if if somebody's saying like, "Yo, you should probably like, hey man, <laughs> there's always suicide." Yes, bro, that's that's wrong. Nobody's nobody's saying that. But what we're saying is like systematically, I highly doubt that a healthcare system is pushing people to kill themselves. That is the complete opposite of all the literature and psychology in everything like that's the opposite of what they teach in those schools and it's the opposite of what all these doctors learned so for you to posture uh, posture that 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 is the policy i highly doubt it i'm like i'm saying i, I haven't read I, on what you're saying but i, I just don't highly have doubt the exact examples besides that one i brought up with me because i was not prepared to argue this point but it's just interesting to bring up in the death penalty discussion because there have been m many uh examples of people in Canada and probably other places where they provide this assistance where it was totally situational places and they offered them and they could have done it if it sounds it like they for. it sounds like they don't provide the assistance it was somebody that was I, I'm reading the article right now on the CBC the Canadian CBC and there is a uh, paraplegic um, it was a Paralympian that wanted wheelchair access to their house and uh, the person said, if you're so desperate, madam, we can provide you medical assistance in dying. Uh, the person at the VA uh, wrote back to them, which is, it sounds like it's completely over the line for them to be like suggesting that you kill yourself in that situation. So that, yes, that, that individual, and it sounds like that was against the law, what the person did. So there, uh, but it's been several instances. There's, I, it would take a while to bring up the exact ones. I, but, okay. But I, 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 I don't, I don't think it's, inconsistent at all to believe that you should be able to make your own end of life decisions and also not believe in the death penalty. I think, I think, I think those are very, you can definitely hold both those beliefs. I don't think that there's a conflict there. Now, should the government show up and be like, Hey, I've noticed that you have a limp. You want a gun? <laughs> like here's a rope. Here's a, here's a big bottle of, uh, Klonopin and, uh, 12 shots of Jack Daniels. I don't think that the government should do that, obviously. Right. But should you be allowed to kill yourself if you're suffering from cancer and you've undergone all the treatments that you've been through yeah, and no, you've been fighting this for like seven years uh, and you just don't want to deal with the pain anymore? Yeah, that's that's yeah. you're right. You should be allowed to do that and not have to worry about like your family members getting arrested or thrown in jail for helping you, uh, you know, go through that process. Because right now in America, if you in most states, if you are helping or aiding at all in that act, then you can be held responsible. And you can be arrested and put in jail, oh. which I think is fucked up. I well, think like sm like smothering, not smothering. I'm not talking about like with a pillow, Billy. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just so, like if you have medicine that you give to somebody uh. or something along those lines. That's interesting because we don't believe that's the case because if it was the case, then we wouldn't, or maybe it's illegal now. Is it illegal enough for them to give astronauts that, that out? I think it's arsenic or whatever in space. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I think they did have cyanide capsules. It's cyanide. That's what it is. So that, I mean, if, if that's true, then we don't actually believe that. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. what we're saying is like, yo, if there's no other way out, like then yo, this is your only option. They're saying that. There, that is a plausible option. But we're, well, I guess what they're saying is they don't believe that you're wise enough to make the decision. Is if your your instance is is is, is plausibility for for to end your own life or not? That's what they're saying. It was if which you, is anti freedom. Oh, and if you get stranded like on the moon inside the moon or uh, the the lunar module, then 
uh, and there's like no way to get out, yeah. get off the moon, and you know that your oxygen is going to run out in like an hour and a half, two hours, however long that would be, then yeah, they gave you, I think that's what it was well, for. They, they also gave you a gun. No, no, that was the cosmonauts. They gave the cosmonauts, the Russian guys, they're yeah. like, here's a gun in case you crash land and there's bears. Okay. Wink, wink. Hey, man, like that's that's wild. Like, I'd be lit. Bears on the moon. No, moon no, if there's bears, no. Bro. If you crash land on your way home, and you oh, use this gun, like, <laughs> and then it, like you, here's a gun in case you know you're the Russians in Siberia and there's bears. But also, if there's bears in your brain when you have no oxygen, kill those bears too. Yeah. If there's a bear of a situation, <laughs> if you can't bear the situation. Any type of bear, use this gun on. So uh, we got anything else on, on the Idaho situation? Oh, Donnie and I mm -hmm. have organized with some people. We're going to go search for the mammoth bones in the East River. Okay. It might be this weekend. So Donnie and I are working on some serious stuff with the Soli. Do you have, uh, I, I almost don't want to ask you more questions. A about boat? This. We have a boat. The boat's the easy part, I would think. How are you going to get to the bones? You know I'm a good swimmer. I don't, it's about diving. Ew, don't, don't. What? No. He's going to wear a wetsuit, right? Yeah. I don't care. It's the East River. Yeah, the East River is clean as fuck right now. It's not your parents' East River. This is, you know, tons of liberal policies, East River. Also, aren't you going to be chilly? Yeah, I jump in the water all the time at this time of year. Oh, yeah, I saw you did your oh, polar plunge. Mama Mad Dog, trying to look out for you, dog. <laughs> like, you're going to be cold. Also, it, it is like 60 degrees here, though. But the water temperature is still going to be cold. The water doesn't have enough time to warm up. Man, I should have said it was going to be 30 when I get there. Yeah, oh, no, it's, next it's hot. Never mind. It's, next, it's next 60 week. right now. I, I started to put on shorts this yeah. morning, and I was like, people uh, people just judge me, but it's it's hot enough to wear shorts. I got that little spring fever feeling where you just start feeling really impulsive, and it's like, oh, sun. Oh, the, nice weather. The now you want to jump River? in the East River. Oh. The East River is as oh. clean as it's been since the American Civil War. Hell yeah. I still Pretty don't. Wild. That's when we had factories. Thanks, Greta. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Greta. Oh <laughs> Thanks. yeah, shout out to Greta for. Thanks, Cuomo. Billy loves Greta for putting my for putting my enemy away. Andrew Tate. I thought I thought Billy was an Andrew Tate guy. Yeah, I'm not. I Mad think Dog's just not funny, a top G. Like most of the population, I do not sponsor any sort of Didn't human get trafficking. Get into hustlers, you. <laughs> Madeline. Oh yeah. Yeah. No. Don't, Rejected. Don't it's sign harder to get into than Harvard. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be a part of his agenda. Andrew Tate. He's well, he's in jail. He's uh or he's. He's detained Dub. right now for the next like 28 days or however long it is. Uh, the Matrix got his ass. Ma maybe um, maybe one of the worst ideas is to write down all the crimes that you're committing and publish them years before you get caught for committing the crimes. Also, he it, it, Digital Footprint got him. Yeah, oh, for sure. Like he, yeah. he had written- The pizza box. Yeah. It, it, well, I don't know if that, that part might not be true. Mm. Yeah, that was, that was BS. Mm. I thought that oh, was, was it? true. It wasn't true. The lady who did just looked for his last post from uh, Romania, and that was his last post that showed he was in Romania. So that's how they claimed they knew he was in the country. I'm honestly starting to think that it was staged by Andrew Tate because if you look at the vehicles they used, the Romanian SWAT team's gear, yeah, you know, it's it's federal federal police in Romania, yeah. They don't fuck around. Like they're using their the stuff they get from Russia, the the all the military equipment the Russians send them so that they can have a puppet government there, type stuff. Okay, so what 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 does that have to do with the arrest? Like, why do they just pull up in a, a sprinter van instead of a like something to actually transport a like a? And uh, why do they keep the van open the whole time while he's pulling away? Like that is easily a way for a guy like that to get shot. I don't know. I, I honestly don't. I don't know the answer. Look to that at question. Jack Mack has a good video on it. Okay. But what is the implication of like, they, oh, they left the door open. They wanted him to get shot by somebody. Well, nowadays there's definite, like when you're dealing with a prisoner, they ensure that they're secure and like something is high, big of a crime as that. Like a guy like Andrew Tate might have like political, like, but he wasn't killed just by anybody. Typically. Yeah. Right. But the, he, 
they there was a lot of protocols as usual in detaining suspects like that that weren't followed in that video. I'm saying Andrew okay. Tate did it himself. I'm saying it's publicity stunt. You're saying that he was that the 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 vehicles were not actually Romanian police, or maybe they were, but Andrew Tate paid him to do that. Yeah, they're unmarked Sprinter vans. Okay. I don't think you know enough about. You're not a top G right now. I don't think Andrew Tate would do that. You don't have the PhD, which is pimping hose degree that he had <laughs> at Hustlers University. That's actually what it was. Uh, Are you serious? By the way, there, I wrote like an Andrew Tate blog that would have gotten <laughs> millions of clicks, and we're just not posting Andrew Tate blogs. Okay, on uh, when he got arrested, Andrew Tate arrested. You think that's not gonna get clicks on the barstool fucking blog? Crazy, bro. They're trying to silence you. Okay, no, on, I just want my clicks so I can stay in the top twenty. Say who it is. Say who's silencing. No. Were you silent or were you silenced? No, just in my drafts. Nate's not publishing the Andrew Check Tate. Check Billy's it's drafts. Not, there's not gold Nate. in there's there. A, it's not Nate. <laughs> Who is it's it? Not necessarily Nate. Who is it? Sounds like you I, want to There's play a whole Nate. panel of. Well, there's I only guess, three of them. Sounds like there's a death panel. They, they decide Andrew Tate is not a. Not a blog worthy topic. Blog worthy topic. So um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna read you some stuff here. Uh, Andrew Tate said on his uh, Hustlers University website. One of the packages I have is the PhD program, which stands for Pimping Hose Degree. And he says, I've been running a webcam studio for nearly a decade. I've had over 75 girls work for me, and my business model is different than 99% of webcam studio owners. Over 50% of my employees were actually my girlfriend at the time. And of all my girlfriends, none in the adult none were in the adult entertainment industry before they met me. Literally, that was my job. My job was to meet a girl, go on a few dates, sleep with her, test if she's quality, get her to fall in love with me to where she'd do anything I'd say, and then get her on webcam so we could become rich together. Whether you agree or disagree with what I did with their loyalty, submission, and love for me doesn't matter. You cannot reject the results, and the results are simple. My girlfriends would do more for me than 99.9% .9 of men's wives would do for them. So that's, it sounds like he was just uh, like meeting women and turning them out, right? Mm -hmm. It's exactly what he's doing. He admitted it. Yeah, he no, he wrote that on his own website. Yeah. So I got my PhD. Oh my god, it just it's, that's fucking that dweeb. P I M P. Yeah, no, you're like literally, literally pimp. Yeah, he's just turning girls out. Is but I don't what, think that's illegal in Romania. That's what he got arrested it? for. It was human trafficking. Yeah, so or would, money laundering. He would fly women over. Like there was one woman in one woman in specific who flew over from the U.S and then realize what she was getting into, what he was trying to make her do. And then she hit up like her old boyfriend back in the United States, who then contacted the embassy because she didn't feel safe, like she was allowed to leave. And then uh, they discovered, they kind of just used that as another piece of evidence that Andrew Tate was just like running. Who knows what what his webcam studio was really doing. But um, it's, it's just don't write down your crimes before you do them. That's kind of bad. I think I think that he what they're gonna get him on is that he uses cryptocurrency to uh with all those things and they probably have laundering problems. Okay, so he's he's using crypt like the women are paid in crypto? Like not that I know, but in these can things like when you pay, mm -hmm. like that's all in crypto. Okay. And then they had to sell that crypto and probably not paying the Romanian government any crypto fees because they probably have no laws about crypto. Okay. Sounds like you're not a top G. I'm not a fucking top G. I hope none of you are top G. I'm a top G. <laughs> uh -uh. Top G? I'm a top G. Well, now the world needs a top G now. We just lost the original. Are you the new top G? I think I might be. You're giving out PhDs left and right? PhDs, yeah. I'm starting my own cam operation. <laughs> What was your second choice if you didn't get into Hustlers U? Hamburger. <laughs> Hamburger University. <laughs> Actually, Hamburg Both prestigious institutions. Extremely, yeah. I, you can make the argument that Hamburger University is more lucrative yeah. than Hustlers. Yeah. That's yeah, why right. you can't wear just the shirt that says HU. You have to distinguish which prestigious <laughs> yeah. institution you they, went to. They, there might be some sort of like study abroad program there. <laughs> A hamburger University. That'd be pretty Send sick. you over to Romania. Is this a world a tour? Or your girls tour? Oh no! <laughs> oh, that was. I did such not a get. Surfer. I did not get the worst serial killer comparison today. Who? What? It's a podcast, it's Billy. Podcast. It's uh. Oh, Hank and Adam Lanza. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's tough. Shit, KFC. That's just out of line. Yeah, it's pretty tough.
Yeah, that's pretty tough. I will not be commenting on that. Yeah, it's tough. I will not. That was way too far. Uh, do we want to do voicemails? I have some, yes. Yeah, let's do some voicemails. Let's do some listener voicemails. I've missed yeah, you guys. I, yeah. Let's just chat. I miss hearing from the people. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Taylor from Gallatin, Tennessee. Uh, love the show. Shout out. Going beautiful and great. But uh, I'm just wondering, have y'all ever been kicked out of anywhere or banned from a bar or a <laughs> restaurant or some club or anything? And if there's any funny stories, you have any friends? We did this, didn't stories? we? I don't, I don't remember. Love the show. Aaron, do you hear that? I can't. I can't hear when they do voicemail. You ever been kicked out of a bar or banned from a place? I've been kicked out. Never been banned. Never been banned. Uh, I've definitely been kicked out before. I'm currently banned from um, Madison Square Garden after being detained and arrested underneath the Westminster Kennel Cl- Club dog show in 2017, I believe. Wait. On Valentine's Day. Pretty sick place to be banned from. Yeah, I'm banned from the dog show. We've been there since then. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not supposed to be there. Oh, is PFT banned or is no, your brother banned? I, I we're all banned. Oh. I, I, <laughs> the whole, the whole every gang. personality. They told me in no uncertain terms, uh, myself and Hank, when we got caught trying to pet the dogs there because we, we, we got restless after the Super Bowl, and so we we're like, let's go cover the dog show, and so we had a friend send us credentials. Um, to the dog show like a picture of them and then we made our own and laminated them did a really bad job laminating them snuck into the dog show with the fake credentials and then as we were walking around somebody pointed us out to uh, to the security guards they arrested us uh, put us in like this little cell or this little holding area and started questioning us like we were terrorists and I was like I honestly just wanted to see the dogs I just wanted to, I just wanted to like pet cool dogs and they're like, tell us exactly what you're doing here. Where'd you get this from? I was like, I'm not going to tell you who I got it from. <laughs> and uh, then they were like giving me shit because it was Valentine's Day. And they were just like, I, I, don't you have anything better to do on Valentine's Day than this? I was like, nope, sure sure don't. No, this, Dude, is, this was my plan. That was right when I said What a, like a funny fucking story, bro. Like that's <laughs> hilarious. That was right when I started listening to Parma Take. Yeah, yeah. That was wild. Oh my God. It was so hold time. on. You got fake credentials. Yep. To cover a dog show, did you actually cover it? And no, I didn't really. Like, I just went there and took a couple pictures and posted those online, and that's uh, that's about it. And then I think I snuck back into the dog show a couple years ago. I didn't learn my lesson at all. Uh, but yeah, currently not supposed to be there. I don't think that this they're guy. actively enforcing. I don't think that they've got me on like the the facial recognition software systems. Um, so they're not really like doing a good job of preventing me, but I think, uh, I'm on a list of people that are not welcome there. Oh, shout, out to, shout out to the security guard that knew that your credentials were forged. Yeah. Well, like, the, it was Hawkeye. also the element of like at a dog show, everybody's wearing suits and tuxedos at the Westminster Kennel Club. And I was wearing sweatpants, uh, uh and I look like me and I definitely look like somebody that's not supposed to be there. Just Jack on the Titanic. I said, you don't belong here. Buddy. Yeah, exactly. They said, get back down to steerage. I actually have a story <laughs> I can tell. I just remembered. I am banned from a wildlife park in a certain state. That's probably for, for the best. For, <laughs> for fucking the animals. No, no, for cliff jumping. I got caught cliff jumping. Why, I, why do you have to be times. so weird, though, and like just not say the state of the park <laughs> that you're banned in? There's no reason to omit that. They already banned you. Well, what are they going to do? It's probably still, New York. I still go back there to cliff jump. In New York. <laughs> yes. Okay. So All right. That's a good that reason to not no, say No, not in New York. I cliff jump in New York for a different place. This was Oceanside. So we were, <laughs> we were cliff jumping and uh, got caught once. They wrote down our names, IDs and everything. Uh, I gave a fake name the first time fake address i actually gave my buddy's address and then the, <laughs> then the next time that buddy was actually with me because he i never thought he'd come cliff jumping with me one day but he basically i was at like a cousin's house basically and i said one of my home friends uh, as a joke 
And then my home friend was with me that one time and I totally forgot I'd give him his name. So then when he got pot, like, this is your second time we've caught you on these cliffs. You're going to be banned from all Rhode Island state parks. And I was like, I said, whoops. state, whoops. Uh, and then, <laughs> and then he was like, what? This is my first time being here. I was like, officer, this is a very stupid story, but I once gave his name as my name. Uh, that one time he caught us before he was like, well, now you're going to be banned from these parks and i was like well can you prove that in court he's like well you're banned from this park because i work here and uh yeah it was sick it was actually funny because he came up by boat yeah and i the boats passing the cliffs used to like wave us be like jump and we just like jump it was like sick but then this one guy goes this one he pulled up and like it was an undercover boat but you couldn't tell from how far away mm -hmm. that it was a uh some sort of i think it was the harbor master yeah who then called in the uh the state park and he goes jump <laughs> he jumped and, and I trapped he called you. you yeah uh do you ever do you ever think that maybe there's a rule against jumping there because there might be rocks underwater uh no because i dive it every year to make sure well yeah it's people hard. have died but yeah yeah there you people go. have died but not made. during yeah. stormy <laughs> stormy times but every year i because i do with my cousins we dive under to make sure yeah that there's like a good amount do a little do a little cliff recon yeah <laughs> yeah um <laughs> listen cl cliff jumping is awesome it's right? awesome i love it uh but you have to make sure that you're doing it in a place that is quarries super safe quarries are the best because those those drops usually go straight down yeah cliff jumping is some of the best rushes ever yeah what about you guys are you banned from anywhere i don't know if we were kicked out and i feel like i've told this story before which is why i asked had we already done this but uh at chef mickey's one time which, for those who yeah. don't know, is a character oh, yeah. breakfast at Disney yep. World. Yeah, yeah. We did. Uh, I've told this. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I think so. Fucking Chip or Dale, I don't remember which it was, alleged. I gave a high five. That story was somehow spun into I punched the chipmunk. <laughs> Just not what happened. And uh, and I think it's always girls that are in those costumes because you have to be short to like see out of them. Yeah. And so I guess she was, uh, she she couldn't handle the heat <laughs> and fucking went and got all pissy about it. I, I don't think we were like kicked out, but I think they were like, uh, don't come back here this trip. I was like, whatever, pal. I love it. Should we try to drink around Food the world? Food there's mid anyway. Should we, should we do a Alex Morgan, see if we can get around the world in Disney World without getting kicked out, being too drunk? I've never been to Disney World. Oh, you're missing out. I'm terrified of people dressed up in costumes. Well, that's probably, probably a, a good place, place to yeah. avoid. Yeah. No, I can't do it. I don't like that either, though. I don't fuck with the the costume people. Yeah, like even mascots to this day. Like I can't go up to mascots at sports games. <laughs> I think it would be hilarious to get into a furry costume and go to a furry convention and then just do the most heinous shit because nobody knows who you are. What well, about can take it off? What about um <laughs> like going down to Times Square? Nope. Was, See the I Mario's don't... down there? Nope. Scares me even those, more. Those, those they're scary. There's yeah. They like if you take a pic like I've seen being there, I've seen like tourists take pictures like, of you. them and then they like get really pissed. Times Square is a fucking cesspool. Yeah, no. Anyone anyone where I can't see their face because they're wearing something else, count me out. Mm -mm. Santa can't get, couldn't go see Santa. Still can't. Still Santa stresses me out. Easter Bunny, all that. Santa stresses you out? Like seeing like at the mall. Mm -mm, not my game. Just be yourself. <laughs> I'm not, not my come down that chim come down that chimney yeah, and some anchor blues see buddy. what the fuck happens i mm -mm. <laughs> not my game anyways next voicemail yep hey what's up guys and Matt? uh love the show uh will from annandale virginia um on day three of uh driving from virginia to utah um and just all the time the road has me thinking how long do you think y'all could go uh, if you were a pioneer on the trail? Uh, what state do you think you could get to? I uh, went to Kansas yesterday and uh, took eight hours of rolling through the plains. And I think that if I was on a covered wagon, I'd have lost myself day three. Um, you guys are all beautiful. Um, and... Uh, Big T, I hope your uh, Tennessee Vols be 
the shit out of Dabo in the Beamer Bowl. Oh, nice. uh, thank y'all. I know we did take care of that. You did. You guys got a. I love your quarterback. I did. I I did tell Ari and I said to watch the game because I wanted to know what he thought of Joe Milton. He's got a fucking rocket, don't he? It's facts. Uh, I don't know what the question was though. Tell me the question. Uh, I forget. The question, question was if you were like on the Oregon Trail. Yeah. How long would you last before dying? Not very long. I'd last one day longer than Billy. Whatever he's about to say. Billy, how long would you last? So all my ancestors never really went west. Okay. Either arrived too late or they stayed. So kind of don't have any of that uh, pioneer type stuff in me, I don't think. In your DNA? Yeah. You couldn't last in the wilderness? That would be fun, but I don't think, like, I don't know. I mean, obviously, like, I don't think any I'd of like our families. To, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think that I could 100% make the Pacific with, uh, you know, with uh just imagine yourself in a covered wagon we, uh, you've got you've got oxen yeah you've got two oxen that are yoked to your wagon you have a musket or a rifle you I've, got a rifle i mean i've driven from the east coast to the west coast by yeah. today's standards it's so true. i mean totally i guess same thing knowing you know by like we i was raised to the day's standards to be able to go from new york to la i bet by, if I was raised by those standards back then, uh -huh. I'd be able to do the whole way. I also bet that if you took somebody from like the early 1800s and you put them in a Chevy Silverado and you said get yeah. to the West Coast, they'd probably kill themselves within the first like 30 seconds. Yeah. They, we they would they probably last there. longer on their wagon than they would in our car. Yeah. Yep. I agree. So, so we're, we're more hardcore they, than they are. If they drank as <laughs> much agree. Red Bull, if they drank as much <laughs> stimulants as we did going back, they, yep. they'd be, they'd be dead yeah see plus some sort we're, of we're used to you know what i'm saying our bodies have been immune to covid via vaccine or via tr getting the disease itself mm -hmm. they get that shit right now they out of there smallpox yep. immediately we're all are we yeah, oh yeah they're done yeah well no it's just that's what i was gonna say though if barring any kind of disease back then i'm not ready for like if it was just element wise i think i can make the whole trip really yeah. What about uh, what about natives attacking your wagon? I'm a little more, you know, dark skinned than y'all. You know, we can negotiate. <laughs> what about uh, what about killing and preparing food? Easy money. What about fucking animals anyway? <laughs> what about driving cattle and having to interact with cattle dogs? Uh, that's easy shit. And dogs are weak. Uh, dogs are don't fuck with horses. Uh, you we have to know that because when I was when I was twelve, let me finish. When I was twelve, um, my my grandfather owns a ranch, and so when I was twelve, my grandmother's boyfriend was a cattle uh, herder, and so that's what he did for a living. And so I spent two weeks with him in the wilderness, and it wasn't like in a camping ground. It was like we was out there in the elements, we set up a tent, uh, uh, all that shit. Got our own food, fished our own food. And I was 12 and we I, every morning we'd get up six, five, six in the morning, get up and herd cattle. Like that's all I did for two weeks straight during that, the summer. That's really awesome. Hell yeah. And so I learned I learned a lot about that shit, which is also why I don't fuck with the wild. I see too much wild. I don't fuck with that shit. But if it was if it was a mission where it's like, yo, it's either do or die, I could do it. I just choose not to. I love these walls that I just built. They're amazing. Yeah, walls are sick. Violent. I agree. Walls are pretty dope. Yeah, <laughs> walls, doors, you name it. But to Big T's point, uh, yo, I don't, I don't know if y'all remember this, but when we was, after we left Tennessee, in one of those episodes, I was like, yo, like, Hendon nice, but the dude behind him has a way better arm. I don't remember if y'all if y'all remember yeah, me I saying remember that. that shit. I do remember. He that. has a he has a better arm. He just needs to curtail that shit. Like that's coaching. If 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 he gets the right coach and he really takes to that shit. Yeah, that is an NFL arm. That is absolutely an NFL starting arm. He threw, no they did a video for the Orange Bowl where they saw how far he could throw an orange. He they he started at the goal line, threw it through the back of the end zone, and it hit the wall behind the practice field. It was like 120 yards. Holy wait, wait, what? Shit. Wait, wait, wait. That's insane. So go, go Google Joe Milton orange and find the video. He throws an orange like 120 yeah, it's, yards. It's, oh, an orange. It's possible because some people can hit, like, yeah. there are a few outfielders that can throw... From the deep outfield. Further than that. To, to home plate. For a second, I thought you said a football. And I was like, no, I bet. What? 
I bet he could throw. I've seen it throw him set throw one seventy yards without like I, really stepping into it that much. Yeah, I, I think I arm. think he he might be able to do it 80, 90 yards. I've like, never seen him arm. truly step in and just launch one. Yeah, I, like I say he does like the. You remember the old uh, quarterback challenges in Hawaii? You remember I would that love shit? Yeah, to see him yeah. do that. Like like when you like you get to set up and you get to kind of like pounce to it. I I, I would be surprised if he don't get at least 70, 75, 80. This is, I, he has a I think he arm. might have the best arm of anyone playing football right now, and I'm including NFL quarterbacks. Like that's how yeah. strongest, strong, strongest, yes. arm, yes. strongest arm, yes, best, strongest. Arm. This yes. is yeah. this is legitimately a hundred fifteen hundred twenty yard throw yeah. of this orange. Yeah, I love his yeah. arm. I I saw. I haven't watched. <laughs> uh, I've never seen him play before the Orange Bowl. Maybe like a couple plays here or there. I watched that and I was like, I want that. I want he, that arm. He entered 2021 as the starter over Hinden hmm. and yeah. didn't play that well. Um, and then he got hurt and that's when Hinden took over. But he, if Will Levis is a top 15 pick, Joe Milton is a first round pick. Yeah. He has everything Will Levis has, but he's actually good. Stop it. Well, and he, he got saw- that dog in him. He got that dog oh, he in him. Rocks. He rocks. I he fucking dog, love bro. Joe Milton. But- he a dog. You saw how Kentucky played without him, without Will Levis? Yeah, I did actually tweet. Will Levis might have been pretty good to drag that heap and pile of trash to seven and six. <laughs> <laughs> that team sucks. I think Which he's we good. knew, but I think I think Will Levis is a good quarterback. I think he's bad at uh coming up with stuff on the spot. Just my opinion. What do you mean? Just like, you know, like a question on the spot. I don't know. Oh, you weren't just impressed with his good. interview? Uh, yeah. You know, just like coming up like low-hanging fruit. He could have gotten something better. But we'll see. We'll see. Whatever. Big I hands. won't impack his draft stock. Big Joe hands. Milton next year, first round. Yeah, I think Calling so. It. I'm buying stock in Joe Milton. I am. If he was a stock. Aaron, if, you're, if that athlete stock idea took off. <laughs> did you ever see yeah. money out of that? Uh, it was, There's a lot of... You know, there's a lot that went down in that whole thing. It was kind of, kind of foggy so long ago, but um, you know, it was a venture that didn't that didn't pan out. But it was dope that you know the whole the whole brain behind it and what we were trying to do. It was it was a good experience uh, fiscally for me. Well, they're now doing it again with Chad Ochocinco. I'm pretty sure where you can buy stock in athlete. Like put he did an ad recently where he was like, put your money like use your sports knowledge to make money. I'll find it. Are they, are, they, are they actually giving them money? F- are the athletes giving their money from the contract that they signed? No, no. It's it's uh, that's, performance. That's what that was. Sorry. Okay, that's that's what that was. Yeah, that's yeah. what that was. All right, we have any any more voicemails? Yep, we have one more. Okay. Hey, guys. It's Nate from New York. Um, just a question for you guys. If there was an asteroid big enough to like do like a total extinction on the planet, do you think astronomers should tell us or keep it a secret? Love the show, guys. Thanks. Arian, the question was if there was like a asteroid big enough to basically extinct the whole Earth, do you think astronomers should let us know or let us kind of without telling anyone? Absolutely. Absolutely. What? what? That let us know. Yeah, you don't want to be like on the way to, you know, hustlers you and just thinking everything's peachy, and bam, dead. Ah, I I agree with that. I just for the point that like you don't want somebody to be like wasting the last week of their life, you know, like everybody like no one's going to do their taxes, no one's going to care about that stuff. Just get that, let let everybody get their nobody's priorities gonna straight. Sh- yeah, nobody's gonna do shit. So you have to make your own food. Like all oh, that shit's gonna be done. Imagine, <laughs> imagine you're waiting in line at the DMV and you look outside and an asteroid is coming. It's like a minute away from hitting the Earth. How mad exactly. are you gonna be? Like I wasted. I came down here for this. That's a wild, like purge kind of environment, though. Like you know, the asteroid's gonna hit in a week. Like. You know how much wild shit's about to go down? Yeah. Holy shit, man. I I would only want them to tell us when they've exhausted all their ways to get done. Because if they're like, we're working on a way to get the asteroid done, then everyone goes nuts and then they can't actually get the asteroid, like prevent the whole thing from happening. Then yeah. I'd be like, like once you're like, yeah, we're all shit out of luck. You got three days. You got a weekend, long weekend. 
<laughs> I don't. I don't hate that. Yeah, because p- panic would would ruin everything. It would it would yeah. send everything into shambles. Yeah. What about you, Big T? Yeah, tell people that's crazy. I agree. No, I'm kind of for the ignorance is bliss. You'd rather just have the asteroid hit you. I'd rather just and then everything's done. If it was a if it was a surefire chance that I no one's surviving, I don't I don't know if I want to. No, like I watched Don't Look Up. I didn't like the way that went down. I don't think I, I don't think I would like to know my demise is is upon me. What about this? Um, what if you're gonna be like the only one at the barstool office, Maddie? Just yeah, I keep so going. Why, why is everybody not here? <laughs> yeah, I gotta grind so hard. <laughs> what if? Uh, yeah, you you like tweeted out. I know the asteroids coming, but grind never stops. <laughs> yeah, I'd be at the gym. <laughs> Yeah, me I would too. get I would get so so swole. You guys wouldn't even believe it. Live stream, be so there'd be there'd be millions of people live streaming it. Like, yeah, <laughs> and point put with their phones up at the sky. No question. Oh shit! Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> it's what, happening. What is this chat? What's happening, chat? <laughs> F's in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the twenty gifted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people. Yeah, so many F's in the chat going on right now. <laughs> Damn, uh, R.I.P. That's sick, though. <laughs> legend. What a has legend. It, has it, has it hit here yet? <laughs> yeah, see y'all soon. <laughs> I think the term legend gets thrown around too much these days, specifically online. Oh, my, especially like Australian people. Oh, my, that's legendary. Oh, proper legend. He's a legend. Like If you drink proper a beer, legend. if you drink a beer in under 10 seconds, like, oh, my, all time. It's all time. You're a legend. Proper <laughs> legend, right? Yeah. Good on you, all time legend. Did I ever tell you about my beer chugging contest in Mexico? <laughs> no. Oh, did, is no. that the one where was people from Wisconsin aren't, al- aren't allowed to compete? You ever see that? Uh, nah, no. It's my it's my beer chugging oh, yeah. story. I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't... <laughs> in in Mexico, people from Wisconsin aren't allowed to compete in certain beer chugging competitions. I agree with that. That's fair. <laughs> well, mine is similar to this. Not from Wisconsin though. So we all went down for the homies' uh, bachelor party. And uh, I could I could drink right so like and the thing about my drinking is like I don't have hangovers and so I don't really feel the effects and that's like an issue right so I have to mitigate it myself so it's like <clears throat> we went down there and everybody's having a good time we go to the beach and one of the bars big pretty big bar is having like a, a beer chugging contest and it was like if anybody could beat my compadre then like he came up to the crew he's like hey if anybody wants to come and you know challenge my compadre. We'll we'll give you and your friends free drinks for the rest of the day at the beach if you could beat him. And I, I'm looking at Buddy. I'm like, yeah, I'm finna tear this dude up. What are you talking about? So you had to, you had to do it three times, and uh, I think it was like three times or something like that. Anyway, went down there. All my homies gathered around. The whole bars watching. I I murdered this dude. It wasn't even close, dog. It was like I just I killed him. Downed it way faster, way more. I just I just did it, and so everybody celebrating. We like. Free drinks for the rest of the day. Everybody gigging. Dude, the bar owner comes up. He's like, hey, man, congrats, man. He's like, but there's no way I can afford all of that for you and your friends, man. So is it cool if I just like give you all just like one free drink and, and we'll call it even? I was like, it's cool, man. That's that's, that's what's up. <laughs> that's that's really nice of you to do that. Yeah, yeah, there, were, there were a lot of people. Hold him to it and ruin his bar. Like, oh, that's not <laughs> you, you put him out of business. <laughs> Yo, this compadre is weak as fuck. Yeah, he needs to get a better that friend. That guy needs to be fired. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I think it's a whole bunch of people that couldn't drink with him. I just, I'm just better at it. He wasn't, he wasn't thinking he was gonna lose like that. I, I understand that, you know, I, I get it. But it's if you good. have a ringer where you're putting like your bar on the yeah. line, you better. It sounds like the the real beer guy didn't make it in that day, and so they're like, hey, <laughs> and you guys able? Anyone want to be the compadre today? And like the line cook <laughs> in the back was like, yeah, I was not drink a cerveza, <laughs> cerveza. See, si, see. Si. The but uh, there's two types of beer chugging. There's the people who are really good at, which I almost consider cheating because it's a trick that only like certain people figure out is the ones who open up their throat. Yeah. And then yeah. they can just pour it down. Tom That's Brady knows do. how to do it. Mm-hmm. Do you know how to do That's it? Do. Yeah. Yeah. And so do you, you do don't it? even, you really don't even taste the beer. It's like you just, you open your throat. I don't, I don't know how people don't do that. Like I see people like that I go against for years. I've seen this and they just hold it in their mouth and like suck in. It's yeah. like, boom, boom, boom. like, what the fuck is you doing? Just open your throat and pour the shit down. Like, I don't know how. How do you open your throat? 
Man, a lot of jokes just ran through my mind. But I know, um, <laughs> but how do you know how to open your throat? <laughs> I don't know. I, the, the crazy thing about it is I have a massive gag reflex. And the only reason why I know is because, like, you know, you brush your teeth. Every yeah. morning, I can't even brush the middle of my tongue without me, like, almost throwing up every single time. So I'm it's like, the same way. I don't, but I guess liquid don't do it, I guess. But it's like, you just, I don't know, like, tuck your tongue and just, uh, uh, I don't know. Cut that uh, shit out. How does it go through the, <laughs> does it go through the wrong hole? There's one hole. I'm gonna chug this water real quick. Let's see, I'm gonna try to open up my throat. You ready? I've never done this oh, before. Oh boy. Ooh. Yeah, but that, yeah. Oh, it, it didn't work. Yeah. yeah, it didn't work. You can't just it pour work. it down. I mean, it's not a tube, but like, I think you I can just pour just, pre workout into my lungs. You can almost pre workout. Don't do that. <laughs> that's the only water. thing that I drink. <laughs> Get on my level. My oh, bad. Okay. Uh yeah I don't I don't I don't I don't know man I've I've seen, I've seen people that that do it uh also those people like take water bottles you know like uh, have you ever seen that thing this was this went uh, viral on online there's this there's this kid that just went like this he, he just like smashed it and all the water was gone that I know how to that's do what he, that's that's what he does it's the, same, it's the same concept it's the same but how can you get the pressure because I know how to do well you can only you can only guzzle as much as the you know gravity allows right uh -huh. and so the with the water bottle it allows you to increase the pressure that's what the make, makes the liquid go down fast but like if it's a bottle there's no, there's nothing you can do you just hold it open don't uh put your lips and suck that 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 slows it down just open your mouth and let it pour out all the way i do like how billy's mentality in this is like there's two kinds it's like the kind that i do and then anyone that's better is cheating actually <laughs> well, the, that was, I didn't even catch that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, well, it's, it's like when you struggle it down. Uh huh. I think it's more impressive the people who can like, because that's just pouring it down. The other people yeah. is like the, the like they're putting it, in some work. It's a trick. Yeah, I know. I I I kind of agree with it, but it's it is you saying that like if you're better than me that that means that you cheated. No, I'm trying to figure out how to do it. There was a time I was I think it was like a. When did I try to figure out uh, that in, trick? In Louisiana, you have to show uh, proof of age if you want to be able to learn how to open up your throat. Right. Can you sing at all? Can mm -hmm. you like? Do you, do you know? Yeah. Do you know how to like control octaves? I guess. Yeah, Bill. You sang "Born to Run." Yeah, you did. I know. So, 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 so like when you're controlling octaves. For a little. All right. So think of it like this: when you're controlling octaves, right? Uh -huh. You know, you go high, you go low. It's going low opens it up more. Like so, okay. just. Put your throat in the position to where you're staying in the lowest octave, and that opens it up. I, that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> I, I think I got I bet, it. I bet, yeah. I'm, <laughs> you know what? I'm why don't we? You. Why don't we? Throat <laughs> goat. Yo, live show. We're gonna all learn how to chug beer like that. Yeah. Yes. Throat goats. The clients will be entertained. Yes, they will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maddie said throw goats. <laughs> <laughs> Just do an impression of Nancy Reagan. You're good at that. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right. That was macrodosing. Thank you guys for, for hopping back on the macrodosing train in 2023. It's going to be a good year. Hell yeah. Solid year. Any New Year's resolutions we got to hear about? I will be breaking. I'll be touching par by the end of the year. Hell yeah. That's good. You can do yeah. it. Absolutely. I, bro, I, I totally was going to hit 90 the other day. I'm talking about I had three or four pars in a row. I'm gigging, just playing bogey golf. You know what I'm saying? To where I'm like, you know, I'm like six over through nine, right? Just playing really good golf, right? And then all of a sudden on the last like three or four holes, I get a nine, I get an eight, I get a seven. Just fell, just fell apart and ended up with like a 91. It was just dog shit. But that's part of the grind, though. You know what I'm saying? I, I embrace the process. It is. You'll hit it. You'll touch bar. Anybody else? <clears throat> Resolutions? I'm going to start journaling. Okay. I've realized Owen um, Router said something about working here that he was like, I forget all the crazy shit that happens because you just have to. You've said it before. Like, I'm part of my take. Like, you just have to move on so quickly. I'm going to start journaling so I remember what happens when I work here. And then some future civilization will find Mad Dog's journal and be like, this is what life was like back in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, by that record, yeah. the 2020s. Early. Oh, we should do a macrodosing time capsule. That'd be fun. Oh, that'd be cool. We did. We have said this before. Yeah. That and I want to um, I want to drink more water, which is working so far. I've been peeing. I've peed twice during this episode. Drinking more water is the best New Year's resolution. 
It's so easy. Just be just like, I'm going to drink, drink more water. water. Yeah. I'm okay. growing the fuck up. All right, Billy. Yeah. What? That's your resolution this year? Yeah, That's I'm growing the fuck up. Can I, what does that mean? A lot of things. Uh, okay. A lot of things. A lot of stuff. Don't worry about it. It's secret. <laughs> it's a secret mission that I'm on. I'll tell you, I'll tell you when I'm growing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm metamorphosizing. I like it. Billy, you've just been in your cocoon before. Yeah. Can't wait to see what you become as a butterfly. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys next week. Love you guys.